So, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Katie Darby, and um, I'm really excited to be here this morning. I am a little nervous myself. I've never taught an Ignite class. Um, I'll just share a tiny bit about me. Um, I moved here three and a half years ago from Atlanta, Georgia. I have four children, 19, 17, 13, and 11. And um, so this is my third career. And um, I work with Shivani Dallas. I'm not sure if any of you guys know Shivani. Um, we're on the AZ home team, and we are based out of the Gilbert office right now. So um, I was her transaction coordinator for um, a little over a year and a half, and then we decided to move to Keller Williams. And she said, Katie, it's time. <laughs> and so I said, okay. Um, and so I, I was in your seat in November of two years ago. Well, a year and a half ago, almost two years. And um, as a transaction coordinator, you learn the contract, you learn the systems and the processes and all of that, <coughs> which is really important that you guys know that contract backward and forward. If you don't feel confident with that contract, you need to study it and practice it and teach it to your spouse and your kids and whoever you can to make sure that you really feel confident with that because that's really the most important job of your job is knowing that contract. So um, so I just I sat in the Ignite classes and I did the Ignite classes and they changed everything for me. It made the biggest difference in me being successful versus unsuccessful. I spoke to so many agents that I went to real estate school with and they didn't do well. And the reason is because they didn't have the training that Keller Williams offers here. I mean, this takes you step by step and tells you exactly what you need to do. So, um, so it made a huge impact. I had, um, I had a buyer from an open house. I had no leads because I was new to the area, you know. So I had a buyer. I got four buyers from an open house, from my very first open house. And I was able to close them um, January 7th, we closed. So I started November 1st, and I had my first closing January 7th. So it's possible. You just have to put in the work and, um, and do what Ignite you know, teaches you. Ask tons of questions. Um, and you know, um, just don't be afraid to be willing to be vulnerable, but you need to drown yourself with information. That's kind of, that's why I feel like, you know, um, I was successful because I did the things that Ignite taught me to do. So I would like each of you to take just a minute and introduce yourself. Um, I'm sorry if you've already done this, but I like to know who's in the class. So um, just introduce yourself. Let me know how long you've been in real estate and, um, you know, if you're new to it or what you did in your, you know, previous, and what area you want to market, like what area you want to concentrate in. Go ahead. My name is Felicia Lavira. Okay. Um, I started a couple months ago, okay. and um, I, didn't, I was a stay-at-home mom before this. Okay. And I guess my area would probably be where I live, which yes. is Gilbert. Gilbert. Okay. Okay. So North Gilbert, South Gilbert. Um, it is North Gilbert. North okay. Gilbert. Okay. Okay. I'm Charlotte Bailey. Um, I'm brand new. I just signed on right before this series started. Okay. Um, I was a teacher, mm -hmm. and I'm currently flight attendant, okay. so I'm going to try and work both. Okay. Um, I'll try to focus Southeast Valley, like Green Creek, okay. Tan Valley. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Go ahead. Hello. I'm Diana Carroll. Okay. Um, this is also my third career change. Okay. And I've been doing it for six months. I originally got into it because my fiance does flips, okay. so we do that together. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it. Okay, yeah. good, 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 good. So have you had any sales yet? Yeah, three. Okay. Yeah. Have they been your flips? Uh, one of them were his. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And That's great. A few buyers. That okay, great. Awesome. Okay. Um, my name's Sam Webb. Uh -huh. um, I've been in real estate since July 5th okay. this year. Nice. Um, not really picking on where I'm focusing on yet, East Valley. I'm actually helping um, a friend of mine in the West Valley. Okay. Find a home, so that's kind of, I've, I've, I've written two contracts. They've both been denied. Yep. Um, but hopefully a third one today. Okay. So. That's great. He needs a lot of uh, seller concessions. Sure. So. I wrote um, seven contracts before I got one accepted. Mm. You know what? 
one of one of my friends she said you're getting great practice yeah so just keep that in mind as you might not get that accepted offer is I'm getting better practice I'm getting more practice yeah. okay so um, go ahead hi I'm Susan Robinson mm -hmm. started a couple months ago kind of same time okay and um, yeah I'm let's see I've lived in Gilbert for like 22 years okay. and kind of South Gilbert okay towards the South Mm -hmm. And just focusing Gilbert East Valley. Okay. Not really picky. Okay. But I know Gilbert really well. The best. Okay. Yeah. And and this is kind of um, like my empty nester, jumping off, doing my own thing. Okay. Thing. I've done other a lot of other part time things. And okay. Guest teaching in the Newbury District and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And now I was like, what do I really want to do? And, and this I is decided it. this is it. And so okay. I'm feeling that real urgency right now that I really need to take off and get business. Okay. You know, like yes. I've, been, I've had so much class. I mean, I love all the classes. Yeah. But I'm feeling that like, yes, yeah. like I really need to. That urgency. Yes. Yes. That definite urgency. Okay. Okay. Like it's time. Yeah. Yeah. I can completely relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, go ahead. things um, I guess I'll I'll go through the slides um, okay so did you guys do these um, expectations so actions so uh, contacts note cards laptop and uh, tablet research statistics um, we're not gonna watch any videos sorry if you were looking for that um, um, so get your head in the game. Finding buyers is simple. Servicing buyers is inexpensive. Earning with buyers is quick. That is true. So I, I shared with you guys kind of my, how quickly I got buyers. But the key is, 
is anybody can go sit in an open house. Anybody can go show homes, right? And that's what I say all day long. I'm like, there's 36,000 realtors in Arizona. That intimidated me. But you know what? There's not many that know the market, that know the contract, that know how to negotiate like you because you're in these classes. And so you've got to realize your value, okay? So they talk about the, the 10, what is it? 10 or whatever. Um, we're not gonna watch that. Um, research your statistics. Um, so we'll get, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but the 10 four. So this is really important. The um, knowing, like trying to get contacts to your database every day. You, you shouldn't be afraid to go and introduce yourself to people or just talk to people. Um, and I practice with friends. I literally would call my friends and I would say, hey, listen, I've got to practice this. I've got to call people that I know. And for me, that was the hardest call. I have to call people that I know and let them know I'm in real estate, right? So the call would be, um, hey, Susie, this is Katie. Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick call. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I just joined Keller Williams and I'm now in real estate and so I'm really excited and I just wanted to let you know and just ask if you by chance had any friends or family that might be looking to buy or sell or invest in real estate. And they're gonna say, um, no, I don't. And you're like, okay, fine, no problem. I just, I really appreciate, um, and I always first ask how they're doing, right? Like ask <laughs> what's going on with their family or whatever. And then just say, just really quick, I just want to let you know this is what I'm doing. I'm in real estate. And then move on, right? And, you know, I'm not going to keep you. I know you're super busy. I just really appreciate you um, answering and just talking to me and letting me know that this is, this is what I'm doing now. So have an awesome day, and we'll chat soon. Okay, that's it. Like, super quick and easy. But for me, that was really hard. Making those phone calls was really hard. So I literally would call my mom, and I would call my husband, and I would call my friends, and I would practice on them before I made that phone call, right? And so then, you know, um, so I found a few tricks with this. What worked for me is I'm able to convert a lot of people just by asking them questions. Oh, where do you guys live? I live in Gilbert. So let's 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 do a quick role play. Okay. Um, hey, so so where do you guys live? I live in Gilbert. You live in Gilbert. What do you love about Gilbert? Everything. Yeah. Yep. I love oh. the schools. I love the um, the area. It's just very pretty and green. And yeah. And what neighborhood are you in? Um, Finley Farms. Finley Farms. That is a beautiful area. I really like it. So if there's like. Is if there anything that you would um, change to get into like a new or better home? What would that look like? Um, well, I guess the the, uh, the bus route for my kids. But that's yeah. about it. Why? What What is the bus route? Um, my youngest can't take the bus because we're a little too close, like 0.3 miles closer than what we're supposed to be. Uh -huh. So my youngest can't take the bus. So that's probably the only thing I've changed. But other really, that, I love the area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, that's super cool. I love Finley Farms. Um, gosh, the market in there is super hot. The, the homes are like, they sell in less than 30 days. Yes. Have you noticed that? Yes, absolutely. I just bought a house there, so. Okay, so you know. So um, so you probably see signs go up and down all day. Yes. Yeah. I mean, actually, there's not a lot in that market right now. There's not a lot on the market in Finley Farms. No, there's not. You know why? Because they're people like it there. That's exactly right. People love it and we have an inventory shortage. So if you know anybody that you know might be interested, a neighbor or whatever, they're sitting on some serious equity. Um, please let them know that I'm a realtor and I'd be happy to just <coughs> give them a free 10 minute um, home evaluation and then they can see how much equity they have in their house. Okay. Would that be fair? Sure, absolutely. Okay, awesome. So, you know, just ask them about their neighborhood. Ask them about their um, just keep asking questions that and then so I asked you guys what area you're focusing in you need to know your area if you're doing an open house you start you start on Monday you go into all the houses that are for sale that you're doing that open house for that weekend you look at 
your 10 homes a day, right? They say you look at 10 homes a day. You know what, you look at the, uh, the statistics of that neighborhood. Do you guys know how to do that? No? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a super cool tool that I just found about six months ago. It's called RPR, and it's in your MLS, okay? So if you go into MLS, the way you can find it is if you go into menu, you can type in RPR. None of this is in your notes, so you might want to make notes. Do you mind if we use your house as an example? Sure. Okay. So this is really great if you are, um, if you're just talking to somebody and they want to know the value of their home or whatever, this will give you a range right away but it'll also give you the stats on the neighborhood. So you typed up in the top, you, you typed RPR and this popped up? So look, I'm gonna show you again. You go into menu, mm -hmm. and then right there under search results. So you, in case you, you know, yeah. And then, uh, I also downloaded the app, so I have the app on my phone and my iPad for RPR. Yes. So they do have an app on the phone. Yeah, there's oh, a great. have an app for RPR? RPR, mm -hmm. okay. So there's some tutorials and stuff on there too. But so if you just type in RPR, so what is your address? 557 South Leavenport. And you guys can practice on this with your home. Do this for your home, your neighborhood, where you live right now, okay? For your flips. Know your, you know, know your market inside and out and i want you guys to go in the homes that are for sale in your neighborhood and the surrounding neighborhoods so if you see somebody so yeah i have a quick question so yeah. my next door neighbor was actually the listing agent on my property okay so awesome. he's an agent so that's fine you know he's yep. been there for a while Doesn't so matter. people probably know him a lot more yeah I mean, and so that's great how do i market like in the same neighborhood without you know well for one i don't want to Piss them off. Well, you might piss them off. <laughs> yeah, you might. You might. But they're so nice. I know, and, but you know what? You're not going to take any. There's people buying houses and selling houses every single day. There's more than enough buyers to go around. There's more than enough sellers to go around. There's 36,000 agents. That's a lot of agents. So if you had that mentality, you wouldn't go out and market to anybody, right? Because like one in four people are freaking realtors in Arizona. Okay, but how would I make myself kind of stand out then? How exactly. Exactly. You bring value that he doesn't bring. So, you're in Gilbert. So let's look at this. Okay, beautiful home. There you go. Okay, I want you guys to look on the right-hand side. Do you see Gilbert, Arizona, 85296? Okay. It shows you what the median estimated home value is. It shows you the percentage of that it's grown 9.3% in one year. That's almost 10%. So a $300,000 house with 10% appreciation is $30,000 in one year. That's a lot of equity people are sitting on. They don't even know it, right? You know it. They don't. You're the source, right? But you have to know your facts so that you can feel confident when you talk to people. It's all about knowing the facts of your neighborhood. The median list price is 325. So the price change in median is 4.8. So this is really important. When you guys are doing open houses and you guys are you know, in certain areas, this median days in RPR, 40 days. We are under a 60 day, um, a 60 day uh, days on market for this area, for the East Valley. So homes are hitting hitting the market and off the market in less than 60 days. We have less than a two month supply. But in Gilbert, we're 40 days, 40 days. So homes are on the market for less than 40 days. So letting your clients know this market is, it's a seller's market. It's a seller's market because our inventory is low. And the reason our inventory is low is because we have so many folks that are moving here that are, you know, they're relocating, they're downsizing, they're upsizing, and there's just not enough homes to go around. And so that's the reason why, you know, our days on market are so low, okay? Um, we are seeing a big shift in the, uh, in the overall United States because interest rates are still low. 
they're only going to go up from here. So why not take advantage now? See, let's look and see what your equity looks like. Let's do that. And then, you know, let's get you into a home before interest rates go up. Because if interest rates go up a half a point in the next 12 months, and the appreciation rate is, you know, 9, 10%, you're going you're gonna to lose out on a really great home, and you're going to have to sell it for a lot less. Okay? So here it tells you the schools. If you guys don't have kids and um, you don't know what the schools are, you can look here, and it even rates the schools. It even tells you what the schools are right there. Okay? And you can see the increase in, in the home price. So this is just a really great tool. And then you can look at more information. So if you click on the neighborhood, I love this tool. You know, there's probably other ways to look at it in MLS, but to me, this is way easier. It's all charted and it's all right there. So that's why I want to show this to you. None of this is in your book. So, um, so look over on the right-hand side. So it gives you what the median price is for homes in Gilbert in general, right? For all the different um, surrounding zip codes. So if you don't know your zip codes, you need to memorize them. You need to know your zip codes. You need to know, um, and then it talks about the population. So that doesn't really matter as much, but look down here, y'all, at the very bottom. Population of children by age group, population of adults by age group. You need, to, you need to know who you're targeting, right? If you're looking in Gilbert, most people have kids. Most people have kids. You need to know those schools. You need to know, you know how they're rated. You need to know um, where they're located. You need to know where the parks are. You need to know where the green belts are. And you're like, how am I going to know all this? Because you're looking at 10 houses a day, right? You're going in at least 10 houses a week. I go in more sometimes. If I'm going to do an open house, I start prepping on Monday for my open house that's on Saturday. And I go in all the houses in that neighborhood that are for sale. I preview them because I've converted so many folks that come into the open house. This house isn't really right for me. Well, what are you looking for in the house? And they'll say, well, I really, I really want a, a one story or I really need a bedroom on the main floor. Oh, there's a house just right around the corner that might work for you. Um, it's been on the market for about 15 days and it's been remodeled a little bit more than this has and it has a pool with a bedroom on the main floor. Would you be interested in seeing that? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Right? So if you know your neighborhood and you know your market, you're bringing value that they don't know. All they do is look on Zillow. All folks do is look on Zillow. So they say, oh, I know what my house is worth. Right? All of them. Oh, I know what my house is worth. Oh, really? How do you know? Zillow, Zillow says that I'm, oh yeah, that, you know, that's, I love Zillow. It's, it's great to look at the pictures and everything, but unfortunately, that's, they just use an algorithm. They have no idea if you've upgraded your kitchen or, you know, if you've redone the whole upstairs or added a bedroom. So, you know, that makes total sense. I could totally give you a 10 minute quick evaluation and tell you really how much your home is worth and how much equity you have in it. Would that be something you're interested in? Leave it at that. The other thing you want to know is the rental market. Because if you're doing open houses, you're going to get a lot of renters in there. And they're going to be like, oh, we're just looking, we're, you know, we're paying rent. And so you need to know, okay, what does the rent look like in that neighborhood? Okay, so you would just go on to MLS. Do you guys know how to do that? No. Probably not. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you. I know what the rental market is like out there because we were renting before. Actually, I'm still in contract with my rent. Okay. Until the end of this month, but okay. it's expensive. It's very expensive. But guess what? That's great for an investor. Right? So, when you go into quick search, see this right here? Residential. Click the drop down. Residential rental. Okay, you're gonna search like you would search for anything else. Um, so active, we're gonna look in the same zip code, 85295, right? 296. 296, okay. And so let's look at what the rental, oh, let's do this too. 
So we want active for the last 30 days. Okay, so let's look here. So here we start at 1300 for a 1500 square foot house. Okay, so uh, villages at Gilbert, then we go down and there's quite a few, there's 25 homes for rent. This one here, so if you guys see two prices on the rental, so the gardens right here, this one. So this one is a furnished. And the reason I know that is because there's two uh, lease, pr lease prices. Sorry, I'm walking in front of it. Um, but there's two uh, prices, so it's furnished. So what they do is they rent it out weekly, monthly. Our, our snowbirds come in in October, November, and I had a couple of leads that were snowbirds. There's no, there, it's so hard to find snowbirds uh, rental furnished rental for a couple months and they pay three and four thousand dollars a month for a rental to be here in January and February okay so you guys just put all this in the in in the back pocket because you're gonna need to know that right and our population almost doubles from December to April because of snowbirds you need to know that right Mesa we have so many retirement communities so we're gonna see that big population um, increase. We're also gonna see it in Sun Lakes, in the Chandler, in the South Chandler area. And we're gonna see it in along Chandler, um, along Riggs Road, because that's where a lot of the 55 and up communities are. We're not gonna really see it in Gilbert. The only 55 and up community is Trilogy. That's it. That's the only one in Gilbert. So, but these are, so these are furnished rentals. So these are great for people that are, you know, looking to, move here but who can pay forty two hundred dollars a month for a rental not many people right so the rental market is super high so why don't we talk to a lender why don't we just see what they can do okay so and there's so many programs out there for folks so look these are all pending and then these are all closed it is tough if it's a decent rental, most of them are kind of trashed. If it's a decent rent and they have pets, they allow pets, that's the other thing. It's very tough to find a rental that allows pets, especially cats or pet or dogs over 50 pounds or pit bulls. They're pit bulls, Rottweilers, those are. Uh, we had a Rottweiler. Yeah. yeah. It was very, very hard for us to find. Yes. That that. Yes. So, um, so what would it hurt just to talk to a lender? Let's, let's see where you're at, right? Um, so that's researching your stats okay uh, qualify and schedule buyers for the consultation to me you need to build a relationship first nobody's going to work with you if they don't trust you if you don't have a relationship with them and the way you build a relationship with them is you ask them questions you ask questions, you, and then you find a commonality that you guys share, and then you, you go on that, right? You create a connection right away. Within the first five minutes, you need to find some connection that you have with these folks. And so if you do that, you, you build that rapport, and then, and it, you know, if they say, oh, I'm, I'm renting, I have a bankruptcy, or I have, I've had a short sale, or whatever, and you're like, oh man, you know, we've all, we've all had tough times, 100%. Um, but I just, I, I want to show you something. You know, um, if you guys are currently renting, let's see, where's my, Sorry, Jeff put this, um, Matt put this on here for me and I'm trying to use it because they won't, I don't have something to hook up on my phone. 
So um, your monthly affordability. Somebody come in and says, um, I pay $2,000 a month in rent. Okay. Yeah. Is that on our KW app? No. Oh. Okay. So there's a couple of apps that you definitely want to have. Number one is the Palm Agent app. This is with First Arizona Title. Um, Fidelity has the same app. Security Title has the same app. It's all the same app. But you want something that helps you help them go, this is what your affordability looks like. It's a Palm what app? It's, it's through, um, mine is a First Arizona Agent app, but Fidelity Title has the app, Security Title. I don't know who, which title company you're working with, but these are all, it's $10 to download, okay? But having this, having something that you can say, oh, what, what do you think, what is your comfortable payment, right? What are you comfortable paying? Because people think they walk into a $350,000 house, oh, my payment will be $1,500 a month. Oh, okay, well, let's take a look really quick. Let's put that in. So let's say you want your, uh, your more, mortgage payment to be, or your rent is currently 2000 Interest rate, 4.75. HOA is $50 a month. Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. So, okay, so that would buy you about a $311,000 house. Your down payment would be $31,000 for a $2,000 a month payment. Is that what you were thinking? I don't have 31000 in the bank, right? Who does? Not many. Okay. Right. So 5%. Okay. So at an interest rate of 4.75, we're looking at a $289,000 house with $14,000. And I don't have that either. Okay. 3%. Okay. So we're looking about 285 is what we're looking at then. This is just educating them. They don't know what they can afford, right? And you're not a lender, so you're not gonna go into the whole details, but this kind of gives you a rough idea of what you're looking for. So for me, when I'm doing an open house and I'm sitting in a $300,000 house, I'm gonna have a, print, a printout of this saying, this is what your monthly payment is gonna look like for a $300,000 house with 5% down, with 10% down, with 15, or I'll even have a lender sitting there with me. And then they can talk to the people that come in. But you need to know the basics of the loans, meaning you need to know the basics of an FHA, a VA, and conventional. You kind of have to have an idea because I had some renters come in, these were my very first clients. So I knew with FHA, they only, I think it was two years. So, you know, I can't even remember. They had a short sale three years ago. And their rental, the, the landlord was kicking them out of their rental and they were ha going to have to find another rental. And I said, well, wait a minute. If, if you go FHA, you can go ahead and, it's only a two year waiting period. Oh, really? Nobody ever told us that. And they've been in how many open houses and have how many friends that are agents? They lived here for and I said, so, you know, they're like, okay, so then that would get us a home for 290,000, you know, 300,000 with the, if we put 3% down. But they've got so many loan programs now that have free money, right? Free down payment, you pay a little bit more in interest. But gosh, I could probably get you into a home for less than $5,000. Would you be interested in something like that? Really? Yeah, sometimes it's cheaper to get into a home to buy than it is a rental. Are you serious? They don't know, right? So you need to be the expert. You need to know this. Do you have any questions so far? No? Yeah, I do actually. Okay. Um, so in order to get like a, an app like this, which would obviously be, be very helpful, yeah. you have to talk to a title company or can you just go online and download it? I just class? downloaded it right now. You can just go right to your app store. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Free agent or Palm agent one. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Today, as you said, so. Okay. Yeah. And, but I don't, did you buy the premium one? It's because you have in app purchases, so I can just purchase it. Like, oh, okay. There's functionality. It's $10. Yeah. 
you want to buy the one that's $10, it's $9.99. But it does so many things and there's tutorials on there. So practice, practice on your home, right? Um, so let me go back. So we're working with buyers. Okay, so we're gonna do one here. So they're gonna buy a home for 300,000 and they're gonna put three and a half percent. This is really touchy. It's much easier on your phone because they're gonna do one of the loan programs. Okay, they're gonna do the programs where they give you 3,000 or 3%, so they have to come up with a half percent. Um, and we're gonna do FHA. So do you see here, you can choose the type of loan. VA, FHA, conventional. And then, so this is what the uh, interest rate is currently for someone with great credit, okay? If they don't have great credit, it might be five and a half percent, but hey, they're gonna already start, they can write off that interest and they're gonna start you know, building equity right away. If we're seeing an appreciation rate of nine or 10% a year on a $300,000 house, that's $30,000. So you might be paying a little bit more in interest, but look at the appreciation you're gonna get, the equity you're gonna be building. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, how, did, how did you come to, you know, like kind of know your, the difference between FHA and conventional? Is there classes that you took for that? Yes, yes. There are classes that are offered by different lenders. And so um, they are super duper helpful. So are you guys connected with lenders right now? Are there any lender partners? Yeah. That was what I was going to tell you select a lender because um, yes. everybody says you have to connect with one, but yeah. is there a list of lenders? And then I would like to pick them. Absolutely. Like you want to interview them? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Maybe. So that's, no, I ask other agents. Ask other agents who they trust and know. So I'll be happy to share some of, some of my lenders that I trust and know, and that will educate you guys on the loan programs. You need to have a high level, you need to have a high level understanding of loans. Um, like, and you can go, so let's look really quick. Since you guys don't have lenders that you're working with yet, let's just look on the internet. Um, Arizona Loan Programs. Uh, comparison. Images. Okay. So this one here is down payment assistance, okay? This tells you when I do open houses, I keep a reference with this. And so that way you kind of have an idea of what the FICO score needs to be, what their debt to income is. This is for down payment assistance. So if you're doing homes under 300,000, this is a great uh, thing to have. But if you don't, if you're doing more expensive homes, Here we go, traditional wait times versus early access wait times. So remember how we had that conversation? Two years for a short sale versus four years. So you can even just go online. But I have someone that I work with, um, trying to find it, trying to see if I can find it. I guess maybe they don't have it on here. but. I have somebody that I work with that has, I am a chart person, I'm a numbers person. I like it all like graphed out really nice so I can see the differences in all the programs. And I can say, oh, well gosh, this program might work for you. Like what I had up here, like this down payment assistance one, right? So um, if just look over it, have an idea of what that looks like, okay? But um, the importance of a lender is you're going to be communicating with them. You're going to 
you guys are going to be working hand in hand to get that transaction done. And you need to feel comfortable, which is a great thing that you said, you need to interview them and you need to understand how they work and how they're going to help you get through your first few transactions, right? So you guys are working with buyers. What lenders are they using? Um, he originally got approved a few months back um, from a, a guy named Neil and, and somewhere in the Conwood, Crescent Valley, because that's where he's originally looking. Okay. So, and he does a Homes for Heroes program. Okay. And my, my client's a disabled vet, so okay. he wanted to awesome. stay with the and his credit really can't be ran again. Okay. So, okay. as much that, as I would like to have used yeah. you know, a lender that I know of, we've got to stay with. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a great point. Yeah. Is it over 90 days old? Is this prequal over 90 days old? The prequal is not, the, no, the, that's not, but um, he originally had his credit ran and all that a few months back. Okay, if it's more than three months old, then it's no longer good. No, it's no, no longer valid. Yeah, it's, okay. we still have a. Okay, a valid yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What about you? Um, one of my clients is using Covenant Mortgage. Okay. And the other, and the other one I'm trying to get in contact with Fairway Mortgage. Okay. Um, in the Santan Mall. Okay. Um, I'll take a few classes through them. Okay. And have a relationship. And you have a relationship with them, and and that's the thing. They offer lots of great classes. A lot of uh, different lenders: Amerifirst, Fairway Academy. Um, they, you know, those are kind of some of the bigger ones. They offer classes, and they're really great. And they all want your business. So keep that in mind. They're, they're soliciting to you, okay? But it's important to have a relationship with a lender that has the same values and interests as you do and that answers their phone. Because a lot of times we're working on the weekends, we're working on the nights and weekends, and they're willing to answer their phone and say, hey, I'm willing to uh, take a credit app and talk to them about, you know, if they can get approved right now or if they need to wait a little bit, right? Some lenders are like, I can't be bothered. If they, if they don't qualify, I can't be bothered. But most of them are smart and they're gonna say, well, let's work together. It looks like we might have a, a couple of months to repair a few things or whatever. And so if you know their services, you can say, These, this, this lender is fantastic. If you guys aren't ready yet, no problem. I'm here when you're ready. I am never gonna push you to do anything until you're 100% ready. You have to verbalize that to people because it's so used car salesmen. A lot of people think realtors are used car salesmen, and we're not. You know, we're here to service them when the time is right for them. But I just don't want you to miss out on an opportunity. So let me just connect you with them. They'll take care of you. They'll kind of coach you and help you pay off some things that maybe you wouldn't have thought about putting paying them off in a certain order. And then we can get you into your home by the end of the year. Does that sound okay? Right? So um, if we come from contribution, it's always a win. And keep that in mind. It's never a waste of time. Writing 50 contracts, it's great practice. Showing 50 homes to the same buyer, you're learning the inventory. You have to always keep the right mindset, right? They're wasting my time. This is, you know, I'm writing this contract for a fifth time. Don't ever have that mindset. Always know I'm learning. I'm learning the inventory um, so that you stay in that positive mindset, okay? Any questions? No? Okay. So here you go. 2014 NAR found that two thirds of all buyers interviewed only one agent. So if you're that agent bringing value, so knowing those market statistics. Um, so one thing I wanted to mention to you guys regarding this, I set myself up on portals. Have you guys done that for yourself? You have? You guys have? Awesome. Has everyone done that? No? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I don't even. Okay. Okay, great. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> you mean setting up like a drip for like your neighborhood so that it comes to you every month? No, every day. Oh, every day. Okay. Every day for your neighborhood. But if you're if you're concentrating on your Gilbert area and kind of your where you live, I want to know what hits the market, what goes under contract, 
what I want to know what's going on, right? So, and if you're working with a certain buyer that's in a certain price point, you want to see that every day. And you want to look through those homes and you want to know, okay, so when I'm talking to somebody at an open house and they're a $300,000 buyer, I can say, oh, well, you know, this area is very limited for 300000 but there's another great area over in Mesa, if that's something that's, you know, might be of interest to you, I can take you over there or I can send you some homes in that area that you get a little bit more home for your money or they're a little bit newer or whatever, okay? So set yourself up on some searches and, and look at them and view them, but your neighborhood, you should be getting every day. So how do you, how do you get that? Okay, so let me, so let's do that. So, I'm going to go into quick search. I'm still in the rental though, so I'm going to change that back. Go into residential. So I'm going to click everything to closed. So I just hit shift and then the down arrow. Okay. And I'm going to select my uh, close of escrow for the last 30 days. Okay. I'll do my I'll do my house. Eight five two one two. I live in East Mark, so it's a big area. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do now. So now what I'm going to do? So there's still 310. That's kind of a lot, so I want to narrow that down. Okay. Okay. No pool. Oh, you're not going to have a problem with no pool <laughs> for two twenty-five. 225 or three? Around Yeah. Okay. So are you like, how do I how do I draw that? Okay, great question. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can um, be specific to a certain area. Because some people are like, well, I want Gilbert, but I want south of the 202, right? Yeah. Or I know my crossroads, so how do I do that? Okay. So she, she likes Highland High School. Highland High School, yeah, yeah. And you can't necessarily judge based on what agents put in the MLS for schools because sometimes they put the wrong schools. So you'll look sometimes in the um, details and they'll put in the private remarks. It's up to the buyers to do their research and make sure that all the information is valid. It's pretty crappy that you have to do that. It's the seller's agent's job to put in accurate information, but I've had an issue where square footage was put in based on what my tax record said for my seller. Well, it wasn't accurate when we came and had the, uh, the appraisal done. So then there was some discrepancy, okay? So, and even with my house, I was told that my kids were gonna be going to Jacobson and they ended up going to Hancock, you know? So you can't always just rely on what MLS says. So- Is that RPR whole Yes, they're connected. Yep, they're connected. And it's live, just like MLS, okay? So here, this is all, this is all uh, 85212. I live right here, okay? So I wanna focus in on that area. Would this show all the new builds too? Because I know East Park's still building up a lot. Right. So only if the builders put the new builds on MLS. Okay. A lot of times they won't. Okay. So guess what? You gotta go in those new build communities. You gotta go in them. I did, last week I had 30 minutes. I ran into all three gateways, nine models. I literally run through the models. I get their papers and I'm like, okay, okay. I ask a couple questions. I ask, what are your incentives, right? Uh, how big are the lots? What are the HOA fees? What's your build time? I ask those questions and off I go. But you need to know the new build areas too, right? Because people are gonna be like, well, 
I'm not sure if I want new build or this and that. And so just so you know, with new builds, this is another important number. Normally people spend about 15% of the base price on upgrades. Okay, so keep that in mind. If it's a $300,000 house, we're looking at about $45,000 in upgrades. And that's conservative, okay? So people are like, oh, I can buy in there. The homes are under $300,000. Well, that's true, but there's lot premiums, there's, you know, and then the upgrades. So, yes. If we bought a new home uh -huh. and it, that 15% is probably really accurate. You know, their eyes get really big and they go in these models. Yes. Because they're showing off all their upgrades. Which is over 100,000. That's the, another number you guys need to know. Models. It's over 100,000 in upgrades. So it's kind of good. I don't know if we would easily know all the upgrades, but to kind of point that out because they're not necessarily getting like those covers and those counters. That's right. Because the like I previewed a bunch of models over by Higley High School. Okay. I went to like nine of them one day. Awesome. Yeah. And they were telling me, they said, yeah, we only have like three chances to show off all of our upgrades. So those models they're looking at, I mean, they look gorgeous oh, and yeah. amazing and everyone falls in love with me. I want to move now, mm -hmm. but, but it's like they're showing off yeah. all their upgrades because that's the only way they can. Yes. So the buyers, you know, they're like, ah. Oh. And that's but, why you're a service. Yeah. And that's why you're a service. Oh man, did you, that model over in, you know, Higley Estates or whatever, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Can you believe that's over $100,000 in options? What, really? Yeah, yeah, it is. Most people spend about 15% in upgrades when they go in and build a home. And you know, some builders are six months, some are up to a year, Fulton's up to a year build time. So um, that's important, y'all. It's important to know the build times of these homes. So, um, and if you have buyers that are interested but they need to buy right away, you call the builders and you say, what specs do you have available, right? The spec homes are the homes that are already built that'll be ready in just a couple of months. Fulton yeah. had tons of specs. Where? Which was Fulton. amazed. It's the really cute one, just pretty close to Higley High, like you know, oh, and going down the record. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you go in there and I've never heard of so many specs being built. So if anyone, that's, I mean, that's good to know if anybody needs a home See? immediately. And guess what? You're going to meet somebody that's going to be like, that's going to start talking to you and you're like, oh my gosh, there is this amazing community over in, um, that's in this great location. It's called Cooley Station that you can get in in a month or two. They've got these beautiful homes spec'd out already. They're 350 and, you know, they're moving ready. Really? Oh man, I really, and they're offering $8,000 towards um, incentives right now. They're between five and eight, right? Normally they are. So again, you're the source. It's your job to know the inventory. So do you think they should go with that lender because they get all those incentives? Yes. So, then, so they should stick with the builder. It, you know, lender. it really depends, but I mean, $8,000 is a lot of money. It's covering their closing cost, you know? So that's a pretty good deal. And you know, they can say, we, you need to put $10,000 down towards bonus money. A lot of people don't have 10 or 15,000 with like Taylor Morrison and Fulton Homes and all of that. So that's another great question. The HERO program, another great question. What is your down payment requirement for new builds? Each, each builder is different, but guess what? They're gonna work with you. You can say, well, my buyer only has a thousand or two thousand they can put down now. Could we put it in installments? Yeah, yeah, they'll only work with you, okay? You don't know that until you ask, okay? Certain builders will, certain builders won't. Fulton, there's three payment plans. So, again, you're bringing value. It's all about bringing value, okay? So, back to this. So this is East Mark. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. So I want to know what's going on in East Mark. And it's kind of a funky shape, which is awesome, so I can show you guys. Um, this one here lets you draw your lines. 
So I'm going to go down here because this is all Eastmark. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go up here. And then I'm going to go to Signal Butte. And then I double clicked. Okay, so that's 117 homes. Yes. So for somebody like, like me, because I just moved here like a year ago. Yeah, for somebody like me that doesn't really know the areas, and I know some places say like, like for instance, this East Mark, but how do you know where it like ends and how do you know where it begins? Great question. So, do you see the East Mark sign right there? So you can do overlays. I just learned this too, so I thought this was helpful. You can do overlays for subdivisions, overlays for neighborhoods. And so now it's not showing up. I don't know why. Community. Why isn't it showing up? I'm not sure. But zip codes as well. So I'm going to zoom out for a second. Let me see if it'll if it shows. Okay. So this is really great. And the reason this is really helpful, in my opinion, is you really need to know the zip codes of your area and surrounding areas because Gilbert has a lot of zip codes. But if they're kind of concentrating in a certain area, then you can just go into your quick search and type in 85297, 85296, 85298, right? 678. They're all 852 and then the last two digits. Okay. Um, so this is all of Gilbert. Okay. So this is Eastmark. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to learn. You're gonna have to learn where the neighborhoods are. So study the maps, you know? And um, but where I showed you in RPR, you guys can have an idea of what does the median home look like, price look like for different, you know, um, neighborhoods, okay? So here, I'm gonna zoom back in. None of this is in your um, PowerPoint presentation, so you guys are going to just have to read the PowerPoint on your own. I'm going to try and hit the, the most important pieces, but to me, it's important to know how to use MLS. And um, so here, so let's talk about this. Who just asked about how do I know where the new builds are? So when you see these kind of pictures, those are new build pictures. They normally have like three pictures. And this is their, for the models, Oh, fantastic. Okay. So let's let's talk about this for just a second. I didn't hear what she said. What did you say? The, this is the this is like their their model picture or this is like their um, flyer picture. Okay? So when it looks when it doesn't look like a real photo and it's just like a it's like a CAD drawing? Almost. Yeah. Okay. Then then you can then you'll you'll know. Oh, okay. But I want to show you a few things about this particular house. So new community, lots just released. New construction, this home is to be built. This is their base price. Let's tack on that 15%. So your buyer is going to say, oh my gosh, I want that house. I want that house. It's brand new. Okay, well, I, I totally get that. but. This is the base price and it they just released the lot. So that's super exciting, but they're gonna be building. And I called Ashton Woods and they said that um, they're looking at a, a seven to nine month build time. Well, Katie, how did I know who to call? And well, that's a great question. There's their phone number. There's their phone number. You call, you call and say, what are your incentives? <laughs> What is your build time? What is your HOA? You ask those important questions for your client and then you go back to them and say, you know what, this is what we're looking at, but you get 8,000, you know, you get, they're offering 3% towards closing cost. 
do you want to go out there and take a look yeah let's go see okay you know so um it's important to look here so look here the original price was 238 it's now up to 248 this started in april that's how much they've increased their home prices since april so why we should probably move quicker than later right and i'm going to share something else with you guys because it is about the payday as well so new builds normally pay three percent on base price not on sales price not on final price okay so um it would be three percent of 248 they end up building out their house choosing all their options all of that it's probably going to be about 280 but you're going to get paid on 248 okay but it's better for your client at the end of the day it's only what's best for your client if you always keep that mentality in the back of your mind it's always what's best for your client you're going to be very successful so i'm going to scroll down a little bit okay so obviously this one you can tell is a new build right it still sticks um okay so this one here on simone let's look at this your client says oh katie i love this do you guys know how to read this do you know how to read this um agent report do you know how to read this because this is the, one of the most important things that i can show you guys how to read so let's let's talk about this a little bit because this is what i do in my buyer presentation i'm going to go into my buyer presentation towards the end of class but you need to know how to read this so then you can teach your clients how to read this so you guys are going to be my client and i'm going to say so you know there's kind of a lot going on here i mean see if I can make it bigger yes okay so there's two reports that you guys print out you print out an agent report and you print out a client report it is important that you only give them the client report it has public it has public remarks on the client but on the agent report you have semi-private and private remarks and compensation they should not be looking at and seeing okay and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that okay but let's talk about let's talk about this report so in my buyer presentation you're gonna say so these are the MLS printouts that you're gonna have as we go through the homes and I put them in order for you so you know which home we're gonna be going to next okay so um, first of all this is where it just tells you how many bedrooms and bathrooms there is this is the square footage the bedrooms plus so that might be an office or a den um, an extra bedroom a craft room kind of thing here there's no pool and it was built in 2015. here this is so we just bought a house last month and i never knew what this was i'm going to tell you guys do y'all know what it is you know what it is what, what is it I think, um, yeah. We talked about it last class. Oh, bit. I don't have a, I don't know. It, awesome. But it just, it's a, a quick reference. As to it the, is. The I did not there. know this. Three bedroom, two and a half bath. Uh, what is the R and the two car garage? I can't remember what this is, but if somebody's looking for a three car residential de detached, room. there you go. Awesome. Yep. Residential detached here. Interior stories exterior or interior stories exterior stories a lot of people only want single stories okay so that's right there here are the schools right here William Wyatt is the builder square footage so what's normally important for most clients is how big is the lot how many bedrooms how many bathrooms is it a single story or two story what year was it built is there a pool and then over here it'll tell you some other items so um eh, that doesn't really it, it this is your main piece that's where they're mainly going to focus and there's two other areas that are important for them first of all the kitchen features some people want electric or gas right so that'll all be right here 
okay, in the kitchen section, and then if the refrigerator is included or not. Okay, and that's something that you tell them. And when you go through the purchase contract, the refrigerator, washer, and dryer are always optional. Those are things that we can ask for, or they might be offering them. So if they're offering them, they're gonna be listed right here. So that way you know. And then same with the laundry. So if the, if the washer and dryer were included, they would say washer included, dryer included. So here, the refrigerator's included, but not the washer and dryer, okay? Um, here it would tell you if there was like that office or den or something, okay? That's why it would bump that number, bedrooms plus, up to four, okay? Um, if you're looking at homes built 1980 or earlier, sometimes they have, they, they have shingle roofs, okay? And then another important one for a lot of people buying are their taxes. So their taxes are 2820, okay? So we're looking about $200 a month would be in addition to their, you know, principal and interest, okay? This is another important one, the HOA fee. Almost every home in a, well, every home in a subdivision has an HOA fee. This, it tells you if it's monthly or whatever, and people are like, well, how much is that? Like if it says annually, you know, $600 annually. I mean, that's an easy one, but how much is that a month? You don't have to do the math. It's already calculated for you. So if it was $600 a year, it would be $50 a month. And it would say it right here, okay? Any questions? Yes. yes when you go out to, to show homes for a client, do you usually print one of those for yourself and then one for the client? Exactly, yep. You kind of study it before you go? Yes, so, so you, um, you guys are gonna practice showing homes, but you need to be going in homes and take your kids or your husband or whoever and practice going in the home and just saying, okay, so, and so when we walk into the house, I'm like, okay, so this home is a three bedroom, two and a half bath. It's 6,000 square feet. It was built in 2015. Um, the refrigerator's included, but the washer and dryer are not. And then I always tell people, so what I want you to do is I want you to uh, talk out loud your thoughts. So when we go through the house, I want you to tell me what you like about the house and what you don't like about the house, because that helps me help you narrow down to find just the right house for you, okay? Any other questions? When they're talking out loud, yes. like, would you be taking notes on the listings so that way you can kind of come back and like, well, this is... If you feel like that's going to help you, absolutely, okay. yeah. But. I mean, for me, when we go through a kitchen and they're like, oh, I hate black granite countertops, yeah. you're going to kind of remember, but if you're working with a lot of people and, you know, it's hard to keep it straight, absolutely, make a note, make a note on your paper. So, so I want to show you something else. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and you can say, so what I say, oh, you know, you've got a red room and a blue room and a pink room and, oh man, paint is the easiest and cheapest thing to change a house. But, you know, it's probably not going to help them sell this house very much because people can't overlook color. But for just a couple hundred dollars, and I've got some great painters, we could get that knocked out, no problem. Right? So if, if, you ha if they have an objection, then let's talk about that obje objection. How can you help them overcome that objection? Okay? So. All right, let me see if I can minimize this. <laughs> I made it big. How do I make it small again? Okay. Oh, I did it. Okay, so when you guys go to print, I'm going to click this. And where it's selected, I'm gonna click that. That's the only one I've selected to print, okay? I'm gonna go into print, okay? This is where you're going to pick, print both public and private reports. You always click that if you're showing homes. <clears throat> So this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to preview it. 
So see up top, it says client report. That way you know. There's your client report. So let's look at that client report. What does that look like? Doesn't include any um, public or private remarks. We're gonna scroll down and look at the agent report. This is itchy, sorry. Do you see here? Showing instructions, owner's name. Here we have the buyer broker compensation. All of this, they don't they they can see like listing dates and pricing and selling, but they don't have all they see is the actual list price. They don't know that it was actually listed at 334. And it's dropped to 329. Okay, you do. You're the information holder. <laughs> okay. Any questions? So what you do is you go into save, save search. So you're gonna name your search. So I'm gonna name this eSmark um, activity. But if it was a client, I would name it the client's name, home search, okay? Or if it's somebody that you meet, they live in the neighborhood and they just kind of want to know what the market is doing, you could say it, you know, um, Susie Q's activity in Morrison Ranch. And you can say, you know what, I don't want to blow up your email. I want to respect your time and your email. How often would you like to, would you just like a monthly report? Okay, well, you tell me what date, what day of the, of the week, or you know, of the month would you like that report? Or would you like it once a week? I can, I can adjust it to whatever is comfortable for you. I want it once a month. Okay, how about the first of the month? I'll send that to you. Okay, great. So, you know, so then I would just label it her name, comps for that neighborhood. So, um, so this is... Katie Darby email. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and I already have an account. We'll see if I can set it up. But so you new. Is that what that yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm also gonna create a portal for this account. So if it's a buyer, you want to create a portal. If it's not a buyer, if it's a person that just wants to see what's going on in the neighborhood, they don't really need a portal, okay? So I'm gonna invite this customer to the portal. So they'll get a welcome email, a separate welcome email. That inviting them to the portal, they'll get a separate welcome email saying, you know, thank you for registering. This is your portal. You create an email and a password. You guys need to create your own test portals. You need to put yourself as a client and you need to see what your client's seeing. Okay? Have y'all done that? Okay. So go ahead and do that. Okay? Do they have a class on all of this? I think Armless does actually. Yeah, Armless does have. Oh, it's through Armless. Yeah. I was looking at February and I Yeah, yeah. So they do just. And you can go on. Um, you can go on Sevrar's website and you should be able to see the classes. There but is a boot camp, camp coming up, I think it's this Monday, I understand that. Okay, yeah. And if you're getting good with a lender too and you have a good relationship with them, there's a lady at Fairway Mortgage who, with, anytime I need a class on anything, she'll do a one-on-one -on -one class with me on how to do. It's like when I first started to learn all this stuff, Yeah. she would I'd go in her office and meet with an app for an hour and then. If I need help with something else, I would call her up and she would show me everything. Um, some lenders do it, but I, I use a lady at a fair, uh, Fairway Morgan in San Fernando Valley. Her name is Jennifer. But if I can call her up anytime and be like, hey, this is what I want to learn. Mm -hmm. and but Susie show. and other agents here in the office are yes. here to help you with this. So if you need help, but honestly, practice on yourself. Make yourself a client and practice on yourself. Okay? Just play and practice. Okay? 
<clears throat> so I'm going to save and add subscription. Yes. I have a quick question. Yeah. So, like, typically for when you show homes. Yes. Um, how do you know how many homes to show without getting like overwhelming the client? I would not show more than six homes. More than six homes. Nope. I would not show more than six homes. That's pretty time consuming. Right there. It is. Yeah. And, and it's it exhausting. Especially in this heat. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. So, you know, again, test yourself out. Create a create a um, uh, a tour for yourself. Go out and see how long does it take you to walk through an entire house. Look at the backyard, and then get in the car, and then drive to the next house. So with showing time, showing time is fantastic because it tells you what the drive time is between each one, and it also does a smart route for you, which is super awesome. Yeah. Can you yeah. show? Are you able to show us that? And, and or is that not part of this okay. session? I can show it to you. Yeah. You guys want to see that? The showing time. Yeah. yeah. Should we finish? I know we have. Oh, we're we're gonna finish. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. So you're gonna save and add subscription. Yeah. See, I already exist. Ah. Okay. Um. Oh, I'll do my Katie. What is my Keller Williams? Hang on. Let me look at my Keller Williams email. <laughs> Yeah. So I live in Johnson Ranch. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to know that area super well for all those people that are going to want to sell their houses and get the heck out of Johnson Ranch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a great conversation that you can have. You can say, you know, it's super frustrating. I mean, would you, wouldn't you rather be in Queen Creek or even over in um, Ironwood Crossing? That's one of my favorites. Yeah, they just got annexed into I know. But they're paying really high taxes and their HOA is 145 a month. However... Values of their homes just like doubled. It was at 20%. I didn't open house there this weekend. Yeah, and um, how'd you do? No one showed up on Saturday, uh -huh. and two people showed up on Sunday. Okay. And it was 240000 Okay. Yeah. Okay. How did you market that house? Um, it was on social media, um, online, and listing agents. And, That's it? Um, just well, I, 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 yeah, and I found out about it. Thursday. Okay. Before. So you didn't really have time. I didn't. Market. No, personally, I didn't. And I know he just listed it recently. But okay. Signs, balloons. The balloons didn't hold up. I wouldn't recommend balloons in the heat. Okay. Okay. Um, I had signs on Ironwood, signs on Montecito. Yeah. Um, thought it was strange at that price. That. Yeah. So. That is really cheap. It must have been a three-two mm -hmm. single story. Yeah. Um. So that kind of stuff. That's like. You. You definitely want to get, so I'll share with you my title company. They do amazing marketing, and we're trying to get them into Keller Williams because they do amazing social media marketing. And um, I'll tell you, this is a huge trick. You guys are going to do open houses, especially that one. Are you on all of the, the um, community group pages? For like that community? No. For Santan Valley, for Queen Creek, for Gilbert, for the East Valley? Okay. That's where you market it. Two forty home for two forty new build. You know, a main community pools, um, uh, legacy traditional in walking distance to the school. Um, you know, who who? Five minutes to Queen Creek, right? Easy access to the the two hundred two. So, uh, but. That's where you need to do it, and you need to start marketing it now on those community pages because th that price point normally goes like that. Yeah. So that's where, if you're going to do social media and you don't have a lot of time, you find out about Thursday and Saturday you're doing the open house, that's where you need to be. You put it on your page and you don't share it, okay? Um, I'll show you guys my. Yeah. Yeah. So. So for you, 
you could say, oh, there's an amazing house in Ironwood Crossing for $240. It's Mesa Utilities. You're not dealing, you're not dealing with Pinal County, you're not dealing with Johnson Water. Because that was my client's biggest issue when um, I sold out there two years ago or a year and a half ago. They didn't want the Johnson Utilities and the water. I bought it a year ago and I had no idea about Your agent Johnson. didn't tell you. And she was my best friend. So I use that, yeah. right? I use that for me because for me, schools were the most important thing. We moved here from Atlanta. I didn't know, you know, heck to high water. And in Georgia, you have to live in the school district to go to that certain school. Well, you don't have to here. That's a big deal, y'all. That's a big deal. For people that are moving here, they're like, well, my daughter was like, I want to go to Hamilton High School because she was in 10th grade. Well, so we got a house in the Hamilton School. Do you know how expensive homes are in the Hamilton School District? They're freaking outrageous. I did not know that we could drive them to Hamilton and we could have lived in Gilbert or in another area that wasn't quite as expensive as Chandler. Nobody told me. My agent didn't tell me. That's a big deal. That's insider information that, that bring, makes you a resource, right? You now have a resource that there's a home for 240 in Ironwood Crossing. You take that listing because it's in our brokerage and you say, oh my gosh, I just found out about this listing in Ironwood Crossing for 240, y'all. Let me know if you want to go see it. Yes. So how do you find the community group pages? I mean, is there On Facebook? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let me, just, let me just finish this up. So you would click save. So I'm not going to create a portal. And I'm gonna add it to existing because I'm already on here. But you guys just saw how I did it. You would just type in the email, type in the name, and then add to portal, okay? And then, so I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna try it again. I might have waited too long or something, I don't know. to existing okay so for some reason it always goes down you need to scroll all the way up notifications it's gonna blow up your email if you guys are tagged to see every single notification for every single one of your buyers for right now you don't have any buyers you want to get those notifications because you want to be looking at what they're seeing, right? They might not be able to check their email that day. If you're in a price point of 250, homes are going in a day. So if you see something, so you need to be on their portal, right? But if they're just going to buy in six months to a year, I wouldn't put yourself on the portal. If this is a, a comp for your neighborhood, I wouldn't put yourself to be notified every time a listing hits the market. Okay, does that make sense? So it's going to send it to your selected contact and it will send me an email to let me know when my client clicks on it. Again, this can blow up your email too because you get all these notifications that people are logging on to your email. So you can click that on or off. It's up to you. So I just want this once a month. So I could do weekly, every day of the week, or ASAP. So if your clients are looking to buy right now, you always choose ASAP, okay? That way they know it hits the market right away. They'll get an email, a notification. And that's the advantage of using you versus Zillow or your app or anything else is right, is that button right there, ASAP, okay? So I've created some templates in here so mine is comps for your home or latest listings so if it's for a buyer then i always do latest listings so this is what it looks like homes from katie darby realtor and my phone number so every time they get an email from me that's what it's going to say okay comps this is what it's going to say comps for your home from katie darby realtor with my phone number I'm going to click save. Do I want to email these listings now?
do I want to choose listings to email? Do I want to pick a few? Or do I not want to send them? I'm going to email them to me right now. Okay, so this is important. <laughs> I messed up on this so many times. Um, if you look here, it always has just the one select house. <laughs> you always want to click all results, okay? Unless you really only want to send them one house. But it always defaults to the one selected house, okay? So there's like a current listing, then there's selected. So let's say I pick like 10 of the homes. Then I could just send them those 10 homes. So that's where the selected would be a different number if I had like checked on that left hand side a couple of the homes I wanted to send. But I'm gonna send all the results. I would never send this many results to a client, but we're just keeping it simple. So do I wanna be notified that I opened it? No. And that's it. So I'm an email. But if you're not sure, I sometimes preview it. You guys get in the habit of previewing the first few times you send listings so you know you're sending it the right way. So let's look at the preview. What are they going to see? There's all the homes. Okay, so that makes sense. That's what they're going to see. Okay? So I know they're going to see 117 listings, not one. Yes. So let me go back to preview. There's a couple different ways to view this. Okay. Same with you guys whenever you're on MLS. You can view it, and this is really important. You can view it as a list. Okay. So here, this is where they can see it, and normally it's priced. It's, it's always um, listed from lowest to highest price. Okay. That's how it's sorted. You can sort it different ways, but that's how it's sorted here or they can see the client detail report. So I click this button here. And so let's go down to a, a house that's really for sale. Okay. Oops. okay. So here, this one's 371. It was built in 2018. Oh, it's got a community pool. Did you see that other one on Simone? It didn't show that it had a community pool. Look, it says none. Dumb, dumb agent. They did not do their, they did not fill this out properly. Guess what? People want a community pool. They want to know that if they have access to a community pool, it's there. So you can't always trust what this says. You need to know, oh, this is an eSmart. They have a community pool, okay? So, so then um, they can just look through the photos, okay? So here we can just scroll through the photos. So when I'm looking at houses online, this is how I'm looking at houses. Okay, kitchen's downstairs, got it, got it. Upstairs there's a loft, looks like a powder room, there's the master. Okay, double sinks, bath, shower, tub in the master, bedroom, bedroom, one sink in the upstairs bathroom, laundry, turf, okay, backs up to a single story, good. That's how fast I preview homes. Took me a while to get there, but I look at this and I'm like, okay, it was built in 2014, 2385 square feet, 4'3", 5,600 um, square foot lot, got it. The one that's really important, y'all, is the map. I Some clients do not want to back up to a busy road. Most people do not want to back up to a busy road. You need to check, does it back up to a busy road, okay? When I'm getting ready to do a buyer's tour, They'll select their homes, and then I go in and I do this map, and I make sure it doesn't back up to any busy roads. And I say to them, 
this backs up to a busy road. Is that something that's important to you? Because it's going to be really tough to sell and they're going to take it between a ten and twenty thousand dollar hit for backing up to a busy road. Is that okay with you? Yes or no? And they'll tell you, right? So that's another really important value that you bring to them. You're going the extra mile and looking to see if it backs up to a busy road. Okay. Any questions? Do y'all need to go to the bathroom? Yes, go. I just, you know, I'm really trying to show you stuff that you can use right from the get-go. Yes. I'm doing boot camp, like MLS boot camp coming up. Awesome. Because I have most of these, but I'm kind of, yeah, I wasn't signed up for some of them, so I'm kind of mm -hmm. redoing. Yeah. So I was kind of debating. I'm really glad I came to the Good. Card. I do, of course. Yeah. So you're probably in and out of there. I'm so am I. I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Why is my card in here? One of my kids took it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's one of my cards. Yeah, of course. Well, I'm glad that you find this helpful. <laughs> I feel like I'm digressing a bit, but um, to me it's important stuff for y'all to know. That's nice that you kind of did the um, what you did first so that when you became an agent, Mm -hmm. You have all of that knowledge and all the contracts and how to like do all the nitty gritty. Yeah. And then now you can just. But you have Melanie. You have Melanie to lean on that's going to be with you to go through each contract to make sure that you've got everything squared. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I. So I'll, I'll get more into that. Um, I really wanted to show you guys showing time, but. I'll be right back. Okay. Excuse me. I need to use the restroom myself. <laughs>
was like seven times. The last one we were at we were at full asking price and six thousand sessions. Um, we asked for one year old warranty and the washer and dryer. So I was like, I think we're pretty good. And I told him, like, hey, let me know. You know, this is what this is what we need. The products are lacking, let me know. different from the way. with, I gotta take off these shoes, they're killing my feet. Um, okay, so I got a couple of books from Title Alliance. So one of the things that's really important, in my opinion, is again, anyone can show a house. And it looks, uh, and it's really fun. It, you know, being able to go into homes is really fun. But what sets you apart from every other agent and every other realtor out there is the fact that you know your contract and you have a process and you have a buyer consultation that's different from all others. And so when I'm gonna when I'm gonna do this buyer consultation for you guys, I want you to know that I tweak it for whoever I'm talking to, right? So if I'm talking to an elderly couple, I go really slow, I talk slow and I make sure that I have a lot of pauses just to make sure, and, and, I, and I listen to them. They've bought a lot of homes. Okay, I don't have to go through every detail of this contract. They've bought homes. Does this make sense? Okay, do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, okay, great. You know, but it's still, they don't do this every day. You do, okay? So you can, you can reassure them, you know what? I do this every day for a living, and I know you guys don't. So I'm gonna go over kind of the high points of this contract and kind of what the process is gonna look like, 
But if you have any questions at any time, stop me, let's talk about it, and then we'll keep moving forward. But just know that you don't have to remember all of this today. I'm gonna to take you step by step as we go through this home buying process together. I'm gonna to repeat it many more times, and there's never a dumb question. So I don't ever want you to be afraid to call me, to ask me questions. Whatever you have, I am here for you. Okay, does that sound like a deal? Okay, great. So there are title books. I should have, I should have brought some. Um, but I got these from Title Alliance, okay? So I, she gave me five. But you guys, um, there's five here. So I'll kind of go through this. But this is really the, the, secret, the secret ingredient. And you can get this from Title Alliance right here, okay? You, you want this? You want these two books with you at all times? So we can just go and ask that for them for free. And I'm going to do my buyer presentation with these books. We have custom books for our team. So, yeah, so so we need, um, let's see, four more. Four more. Four more, the home buying guy. Mm -hmm. so, um, <clears throat> so let me just kind of give you guys a couple of scenarios and kind of how I how I work with buyers and different buyers, okay? So if somebody, you know, I need an open house, they say, you know, I'm, I've been looking for a while, and will you give me one of your objections? What did you hear from your buyers this weekend? From people that came for? I'm not from, well, a different open house in my um, that two people that I'm working with now, they would like to, um, they need to sell them where they buy. Okay. Which is a bad projection, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. So how did you? So what did you say when they said that? That was kind of what I found out later on, you know, okay. after following up. With yeah. Them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I've given I that you I've. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so you're getting it hard, couple. Sam, with open houses. You're doing. Every, uh, yeah, this whole month. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think I've had four. You've done four open houses, yeah. and you have, and you have how many um, folks in your pipeline? Uh, maybe six. Six. Maybe okay. five. Five or six. Yeah, five or six. Five or six. Yeah. Are there any that you're actively looking to help buy a house right now? Um, three. Three. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fantastic. So two, of, two of them need to sell. Okay. Um, Are you going to list their home? That's the, that's the plan. One okay. of them uh, just had a. Uh, her husband passed away, uh, so everything's real. Yeah, I'm not pressing anything there. No, nope. um, you just did you send her a sympathy card? Uh, no, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah, send a sympathy card. Mm -hmm. it, and you know what? Life happens. I literally I went and met with a um, somebody to list their home, and the next day he called me and he said, Katie, I just found out I have cancer. I can't, and I said, no problem. I said, you take care of yourself, and when you're ready, I'm here. But I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be praying for you, and I just want you to know that, you know, I just, I only want the best for you, and if there's anything you need between now and then, I'm here for you, besides real estate. Yeah. So, um, my problem with that is she hasn't given me her address. Okay, to, oh, I, that's I, easy. I, I know where, I know, I looked her up, or I looked it up in Monsoon. That's all, all you need. I don't want to send her a card without her. Why? <laughs> so she's how'd you get my address? You, you can say, I'm a realtor. <laughs> I'm a realtor, I have access to tax records. Okay. And you can just say, you know what, we met, and I found out, you know, I, I just want you to know that I'm thinking of you, and I'm really sorry that you're going through this right now. Let me tell you, I've gotten three listings because I sent a card. I found out what was going on with them, and I followed up with a card. And honestly, at that point, I really don't think she, that's going to be on her mind. Now you got my address. It's going to be like, no, okay, I, I didn't, didn't want to. I no. just felt like I maybe mean, I was. No. Oh, was I can stalk like nobody does. <laughs> you guys want to know how to stalk? Ask me. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, I do want to show you guys something really quick with the app. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a. Oh, I got to do it on here. When I'm doing open houses, so I know I keep referencing open houses, 
But for me, that was my bread and butter. When I, when I started, that's how I got sales right away. It wasn't, I wasn't giving leads. I, I didn't have any listings for people to call me. I had nothing. So I did my open house. This is what I did. I listened to Barbie because Barbie taught the class. And I think you guys do an open house class here, don't you? Is there a section? I think the last one in my opinion. Was it? We did a lot of open house talk last, right. last class. Okay. Sell your listing. Sell your listing or open house? It was part of sell your listing. Okay, so this, is, so this is the thing. For your open houses, this is what you have to do. If you want to be successful, this is what you have to do. Number one, you have to know all the homes that are for sale in that area. You need to go in all those homes that are for sale in that area. Okay, then you need to um, create a flyer, and I'm going to show you guys something. Cost you nothing. You're going to go back into RPR. This is the coolest thing, y'all. So, um, Okay. No, let's do, I'll do my listing that's active. North Pheasant. So you guys are going to do my listing. It's not North. Is it North? No, it's not. Is it North? I can't remember. Yeah. Maybe it is North. Okay. Search. Yes. Okay. So. If you guys are like, I don't know if this house is really worth it. Uh. So I have it listed for 335. RVM, that's what RPR thinks the house is worth. It's an algorithm, just like Zillow. RPR uses an algorithm. So it so you can say, oh well, if you don't know and you're not sure, and you're talking to somebody and they want to know what their house is worth, you can say, well, the range is really between like 305 and 350. Okay, I don't know what the heck. I haven't been in that neighborhood. I don't know, but you can pop it up here, right? So you can still look like the neighborhood expert even if you're not, right? Just by going on RPR. But let me show you. If you go into reports, this is so cool. You can do a property flyer. Boom. So, Run report. Your flyer must have a headline. Okay. Open house. Open house Saturday. Yeah. Well, you have to put in a headline. It says you have to put in a headline. So I'm going to do an open house from 10 to 1. That's my headline. Okay. I can suppress your built, the tax amount, the subdivision. I can suppress any of these things. And you guys need to practice just doing this. Okay, so it's going to pop up in a couple minutes. So you're going to print this off. You're going to print it in color for 30 cents a piece here. And you're going to take 10 with you. You're going to print off your MLS printout, that agent report that we just went over. You're going to have that with you. Okay? You're going to print your comps for that neighborhood and take them with you. So that way you know every house in the neighborhood somebody says oh well this, this oh God. <laughs> okay Love okay. report sorry a little jumpy um so looky there y'all boom can i see the top of it yes and it puts your picture up there yep all you have to do is download your picture and the Keller Williams logo on um, on your RPR, and it automatically pops all that in there. It costs you nothing to create this flyer, but thirty cents to print it. So now you have now you have the information to do an open house, okay? So you can print fifty of these. I would not do them all in color, but you could go around. So this is the next thing you're going to do. You previewed the neighborhood. You did that on Monday or Tuesday. You have all your 
information for all your homes. You're going to keep those with you. And then you're going to go around on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday evening around 4 o'clock, and you're going to invite neighbors to the open house. And you're going to say, this is what I say. Hey, I just want to let you know I'm doing an open house this weekend on Saturday, so there might be some additional traffic. So I just kind of wanted to give you a heads up. You're not inviting them. You're not like, it's just, hey, I want to be, and then they'll say, oh, okay, thanks. And I'll just say, hey, I'm just curious really quick. Like, what's one thing that you love about this neighborhood? Just like I did with you, right? And then if they start talking, then you can, oh, really? Why? So you can kind of engage and just say, you know, I just, I love to have this information for my open houses on Saturday. You know, the house down the street, it's, uh, it, it was only on market for three days. Can you believe that? Oh, really? What did it end up going for? Right? That's what they're going to ask you. you. You just became the neighborhood expert because you've been in all the homes. You know how long they've been on the market. Okay? And just say, you know, it looks like people are, you know, we're, we're looking at a 9% increase in equity in one year. Do you know how much equity you have in your home? And, you know, they might shut you down, which is totally fine. It's totally fine. You're just letting them know, hey, I have an open house. There might be some additional traffic. If you know anybody interested in moving in, this is your chance to, you know, pick your neighbors. A, a lot of the, the people that went there were neighbors, and a lot of them. Nosy neighbors. Yeah, and a lot of them um, had already family living close to them. Perfect. So they were looking for another house. That's exactly yes. right. Yeah. That was like, wow, well, because they really like that neighborhood. They do. They do. And that's what you'll find. So if you just ask, so what do you love about the neighborhood? I hate it here. There's too many kids. Oh, really? So would you be interested to know what your home is worth so you could sell it and move out of this neighborhood into a neighborhood that might not have so many kids? Right? So you guys have this. And again, you know all of your numbers. All of your numbers are right here, guys. Medium home price, 312. You know, what has, how, how much had they gone up in the last year? 8.3%, right? So you have all of those numbers already. Days on market, 35 days. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. So as an agent, when you go into an open house, just to do like preview, do you have to let them know that you're an agent or can you just go in there? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great practice for you because you're going to be, and, and you can, I don't, I sometimes say I'm previewing. I'll just say, oh, I'm previewing for a client. You are. Um, but, yeah, you can just say I'm previewing, um, and if they ask, a lot of times they don't ask. Let's take it to lazy. Any other questions? I found out something interesting. Um, I went into an open house in my friend's neighborhood in like Ashley Ranch and Gilbert. And it was interesting because there was one um, sign pointing into the house, but the agent that was in there was from a different brokerage. So I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly. I was going to say I found out because I mentioned it after. Mm -hmm. And we don't do that. I asked her, I said, well, I noticed there was a different like brokers sign outside, but you're not with them. And she said, oh, I just didn't have any. So I, a friend of mine had this open, so I'm just doing it for a friend. A lot of it's the boutique brokerages. Okay, they don't have any listings, and they don't have any support. So they'll piggyback off one another, because there's no, um, they just they just do, do that, you know? If they don't, we are just very blessed because we have 250 agents. And we've got great listings. There's always our own houses to do. There are for Keller Williams. Yeah, so we don't need to go outside. You know, and we don't go outside of our own program. Right. So right. that is good to learn. It is good to know. But you know, I do get that resistance sometimes. Like Jeff did my open house this weekend. I'm the listing agent on it, but he does them for me. Um, and so, but y'all, I did open houses for the first year I was in business to generate my, own, you know, to generate my own leads and and all of that so um but you know he did my open houses and so they're like well he's not the listing agent why you know 
And so I'll just say, you know what, I just, I had a conflict, and so he held it open because we try to offer the most superior client care we can. Our client wanted to have this held open, and so we made sure that it was held open. Any questions? Ready? Like, it's all about offering the best client care we can to our clients. Okay, so, um, so let's talk about, so we door knock, and we let people know there's an open house. Hey, there's gonna be some traffic, and if you by chance know anyone interested, and you know, oh, okay, I don't know anybody. Okay, no, great. I'm just curious, what was the one thing that you love about this neighborhood? Move on, okay? And um, you're out for maybe an hour. You're gonna be hot and sweaty and gross, so call it a day, right? But I try and, you know, hit about, it just depends on if people open the door and, you know, I can talk to a brick wall. So um, sometimes I only hit a few houses, but you definitely, and, and if you can't do that the morning of the open house, go around the, just and let them know that, that I am having an open house. I want to let you know for security reasons that I'm here, but also there might be some additional traffic. Okay, that's fine. Okay? So, just out of curiosity, I mean, where I lived in my rental, we have a few homes that are like, you know, um, on the market and they've done open houses, and I've never once had someone knock on my door to ask about this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, is it just something Keller Williams does, or is this? Like a lot of people don't know how to do it. A lot of people don't know how to do it. So, um, I just, you know, it is it is hard and it's hot, but it's just another service that we're providing. We're coming from contribution. And people might get ticked that you're knocking on the door and you just apologize and keep moving. Or you leave the flyer on their door and you just keep moving. Like, it's okay. But wouldn't you like to know that there's going to be an open house down the street from you and you have kids? You're not going to let them just go ride their bikes from 10 to 1 if there's a bunch of cars, right? So it's just about being considerate, you know? Anyways, that's my approach. And I, and I had really great luck with that because then my first open house, keep in mind, I did all of these things. The neighbor comes across the street, well, we're thinking about maybe renting our house out, right? You want to know that rental market too. Oh yeah, so the rentals in this area go for about $18.50, especially for a single story, those are really popular. So tell me, like, what kind of upgrades do you have in your house? Well, then we'll start talking. You know, they put in granite, so they should get $50,000, you know, it's just, you know, and you just listen, right? And you make some notes, you go, oh, okay, great. Um, so, so then you put out the open house signs and you advertise this open house on everything. So we talked about the community pages on Facebook. You advertise it, you do not put the price, okay? You do not put the price. You put your information, you put the, the address, the time, all of that. You do not put the price. PM me, call me, text me for details. I'm happy to schedule a private showing, okay? Um, and the time, but that's going to bring people in. And you need to make sure that the listing agent advertises that bad boy on MLS and on Zillow. Okay? You put up a sign. Okay? It's the day of open house. You put up a sign. Um, please sign in for security reasons, right? Um, you turn all the lights on. You bring waters and snacks. I always bring cookies. There we go. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is what they Yeah. So you just put that by the front door so they know that they're going to have to sign in. I'm not pushy to have them sign in right away. Um, I just, so, um, so we'll just role play a little bit, right? So um, you walk in. Hey, how are you? I'm Katie. Uh, I'm with Keller Williams. What brings you in today? And browsing. You're just browsing. Friend. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Do you live in the area? Yeah, I do. Okay. Do you do you own or do you rent? I'm just renting. Yeah, I just kind of want to see what things are going for. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. Well, welcome. Um, what was your name? Diane. Diane. Okay. Great, Diane. So you know, come check out this house. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath, and um, you'll notice that they did upgrade the kitchen. They have new carpet upstairs in all the bedrooms. 
And so, you know, come on in and check it out. And so you'll be like, okay, and, and here's a flyer. So if there's any questions, let me know. So then you'll start walking around the house and I'll come in, I'll, you know, I'll kind of follow you around a little bit. I do, this is the way I do it. Some people are like, you go through the house, whatever. And so I don't. I'm, I, I kind of follow them around a little bit. I'll just, you know, pop in. So, uh, you know, some of the things I just want to point out really quick, um, ceiling fans throughout the house. And uh, they just did granite countertops and they did new cam lighting. The landscaping was just redone two years ago. And then, you know, we might go upstairs. So, so does this layout work for you? No. No, it doesn't? What, why not? Um, it's just not very open. Okay, yeah. so you kind of prefer a more open concept? Right. Okay, what did you think of the kitchen? It was good, like I didn't like the color scheme, but mm -hmm. it was fine. So do you like the two-story? No. Okay. I think I, I want to go one story. One story? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. So, I mean, but what do you think of the bedroom size and the master bath? That was good. That was good? Yeah, that would be good for the future. Okay. All right. So, would a four bedroom work for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. I, um, so obviously this home doesn't work for you, but there's one right around the corner that is a single story. It's about 15,000 more than this current home. And um, it might be of something of interest to you. Would you be interested in that home? Yeah. Okay. Well, what I can do is I have an app that I can um, just share with you. And the cool thing is, is you can look at any home anywhere you are. So that way, if you're in an area and you're like, oh, what is that home worth? It'll show it right away on my app. And if you like it, you can send it to me. And that way, I can... Um, I can schedule a showing for you to go check it out. Is that is that okay? Mm -hmm. No, say no. Oh no. Say so you've got Zillow. I have Zillow. Okay. <laughs> oh well, you know, I love Zillow. Zillow is really super fr um, friendly and easy to use, but mine is actually actually more current and up to date than Zillow. Zillow sometimes takes up to two weeks. Have you noticed that? Like some of the homes you might really like. They say they're for sale, but they're not. So mine is current. You get live um, information. And I've got this open house button that you can that you can see any of the open houses. Would that be cool for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. So um, what I'm gonna do then, this is supposed to be my phone. Hang on. Look, I'm Jeff. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I can just text it to you right now. What is your phone number? It should pop up. <laughs> you guys have the app, right? Okay, open up your app. renting right now so um, so tell me how long is um, do you want to stay in this area or yeah. you do mm -hmm. okay yeah, I like it. 
Okay. And how long is your lease for? I have four months left. Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, so is home buying something that you're thinking about you want to, is your next um, step? Yeah, I just, I don't know if I can qualify, so I'm kind of nervous about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I can tell you what, I've got a couple of lenders that I work with that I would be happy to share their information with you, and I can have them call you, or you can call them. It's totally up to you. But um, I'm just curious, kind of what is your monthly payment right now for rent? Um, 1800 Is that comfortable for you, or is yeah. that something that's comfortable? Yeah, that's okay. All right, so for $1,800 a month, um, sorry guys, um, do you, so if you're looking in four months, what is your down payment going to look like? Do you have a down payment at all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have like 5000 5, like Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of different programs, and so that's why I would love for you to talk to a lender. Sometimes it might take a month or two. There might be something weird on your credit that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. That's what I end up seeing a lot of times is stuff will pop up, and, and clients didn't even know that it was there. So this might give us an opportunity for, you know, one or two months to clean up or whatever and get you prepared because it normally is about a 60-day process from the time we start to the time we finish. Okay. So really four months is perfect. So what I can do is, so you said you wanted a single story, four bedrooms was good for you, you kind of want to stay in this general area. Yeah. I can go ahead and create a search for you and I can send you the latest listings if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and I can email those to you as soon as they hit the market. Would you like me to do that? Say no. Yeah. Oh, no. No, okay. <laughs> um, no, I totally respect that. Um, and I don't want to blow up your emails. Since, we're, since you're still a couple months out, I'd be happy to maybe send you listings once a week. Would that be okay? Yeah. Say no. No. Okay. <laughs> People are not receptive. They, they're going to just keep telling you no. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's fine. No worries. Well, listen, you know, you've got my app. So that's got my phone number. That's got everything, you know, you need. Do you mind if I just follow up with you in just, you know, uh, a couple weeks to make sure that you were able to connect with that lender or that lender connected with you? Would, would that be okay? Okay, all right, yeah, no, no worries. I, I want to go at your pace and I do not want to step on any toes, okay? So um, this is just a, this is a, a, a big deal. It's your first big investment and so I just want to make sure that you're well taken care of, okay? Thank you. Okay, you bet. Not too hard, right? But I wanted her to keep saying no so you guys heard the way that I handled the objection, right? Y'all on YouTube, go on YouTube, there's great objections, how to handle objections. How to handle when buyers say no, okay? Because um, you're going to get a lot of no's. You're going to get way more no's than more yeses, okay? And Keller Williams has got, oh, why is my picture up there? Oy. <laughs> I told you it wasn't going to be up there. I think you have to hit okay first. Where's okay? Oh, it stopped. Why did it stop? Uh, there was a, a couple that they just came in from, a, from California mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, so they weren't in a rush and they had to rent. Okay. And he was going to be in a lease for a year. So did he already sign? Did he already sign the lease? something that you know you can talk to you can say you know it's great that you have that option to to rent but you know maybe we could talk to your landlord and see if if we found something within that year maybe we mm -hmm. could if we found another renter for them maybe you could get out of your lease okay yeah so um because for me i worked with a lot of renters before i started working with fire i took anything a lot of agents that have been in the business a while, they don't want to work with renters because it doesn't pay enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we make 
definition of the parameters? Great question. Great question. So let's look at that. I'm going to show you guys how you do that. So we're going to look in the East Valley, not in Douglas. Oh my gosh, where are we? <laughs> okay, I zoomed out too much. Okay. Okay, so let's pick this one. This is in Queen Creek. Maybe. It's revving up. Um, but normally it pays like between $150 and $500 for a fiber fee. Okay. So, but uh, it's in the same spot where you would look for the percentage of commission. Um, I don't know why it's not working. Ah, Select. okay, so this is in Copper Basin out in Santan Valley. So do you see right here? That tells you how much you're gonna make. I'm bringing a renter for that house. So let's talk about this really quick. Okay. Um, so let's just let's just point out a few things on this really quick. Here, this is non -assist, um, assistant animals, so they will allow pets. And a lot of times they'll put that information, pet rent if applicable. So here it tells you a 12 month minimum. Okay, so. If you guys are working with renters, those are some of the things that you're going to need to be looking at. And you can check those boxes when you go into your edit search op options. Over here, there's an area for pets. So let me put in pets. Do you guys know how to do this? If, if you're like, okay, Katie, wait, you showed me that area for pets. I'm not sure and you can't find it because it's way too many options, you can just type it in this plus area right here. Okay, pets. So these are your options, call, lease or approval, no or yes. So we need only homes that allow pets. Okay, so that brought it down to 309. So do you see how much, how limited we are for homes with pets. So really quickly, how does that work when it comes down to like the brokerage split? It's still a 70-30 even on rent? Is that how that works or? I'm not positive, that's a Michelle question. Yeah, so for sure question. But normally, yeah, until you cap, you pay your the same. Right. Yeah, so. Okay, so let's do the, um, you guys ready for the buyer consult? So, so we chatted. Diane and I chatted, right? And, and she's decided she wants to work with me because I've sent her a card, right? I, I shot her a text because she's a millennial. She doesn't want to talk on the phone, okay? <laughs> so, um, and that's, that's the other thing I do. She left my open house and I'll send her a text. Hey, I just, thanks, to, thanks so much for stopping by. Um, it, was, it was a pleasure meeting you. Katie Darby, how are you? Okay, quick keys on your um, phone. You guys know how to do that? Quick keys on your phone. Get together with your friends. I have a quick key. You always have to put your brokerage whenever you sign your text. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Whenever you send a text for business, you always have to say, Katie Darby, Keller Williams Integrity First. I have a quick key for mine that's KD, and it will always type in Katie Darby, Keller Williams Integrity First. 
I'm not going to type that out. Just that. It's under your key. You need to go under. Just do a Google, make a note, look on YouTube, quick keys for your phone. So I'll shoot my millennial a text and say, hey, thanks for popping in. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you, Katie Darby. Wednesday or Thursday, I'll shoot her another text, put an alarm in my phone, follow up. Hey, I just wanted to uh, see, were you able to uh, get in contact with those lenders? No, I haven't had a chance. Okay, no worries. Would it be easier for me to just have them call you? And she's going to say yes at that point because she, she doesn't want to look up the phone, you know. Uh, and, and you also shared those with her. You texted her those contacts for the lenders, okay? So we've set up the portal. We've talked about homes. Now I've talked to my lender. Lender says uh, she's approved for 300000 Okay, so I called Diane and I said, what, what did you and the lender decide? What is a comfortable price range for you? Because people might not want to go to their max home, home price. They want to stay within a comfortable range. So they'll tell me. So then I will set up their search, but listen to this. I always set it up 10000 more than what they're looking at. Because if they decide that what is out there is crap, but if they pay a little bit more, then it's going to be worth that extra 10000 Okay? So let's, we're finally sitting down, and oh my gosh, I'm so excited that we're finally here at this, at this point. So I just, I want to spend about 10 minutes with you going over uh, kind of what the process is going to look like. Okay? So then we'll head out and we'll start our buyer tour today. Okay? So um, I got the prequal letter from the lender, so I'm just super excited to get everything worked out this is going to make the home buying process so easy so um, the thing that is the most important really about buying a house is the purchase contract and so there's there's a couple of documents that are super helpful so here in your home buyers guide if you turn to page six there's a buyer's advisory there so because you're a first-time home buyer, and even if you weren't a first-time home buyer, I always direct people to this, to this um, buyer's advisory. This is 14 pages of information that's really helpful. There's going to be a lot of terms and things that we talk about that I might mention to you that you're not familiar with. So if you look at the second page, that's your table of contents. So if you're worried about pests or if you're worried about you know, soil conditions or water issues in certain areas. This is where you're going to look, or schools or city districting issues. This is all right here, okay? And so what you can do is it tells you what page these items are on. So that way you can reference this. This is a hard copy. You can take this with you. But it, I'm also going to be sending you a digital version. So you'll have live links to that as well, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, great. So, um, I've never even looked at this book, so I don't even know what's in here. But what I normally do is, then I say, so I, I talk about the home buyers, and then I say, okay, so now we're going to talk about the purchase contract. This is really the bread and butter of, of what we're doing here. It costs you nothing to have me represent you as a buyer's agent, okay? It is my fiduciary responsibility to look at what's in the best interest of you. So I always want you to remember that, okay? This is a lot of information that I'm going to be going over with you, but <clears throat> if you have any questions, ask. Stop me, ask, and we'll, we'll kind of go over it. Okay, so this is not me doing it. This book is really cool because they, they break out each section and detail it, this title alliance, so this is really cool. Y'all don't have a copy of this, they only have one copy, but I'm gonna leave it here for you guys and you can look through it. And you guys need to ask title alliance for this, okay? And you always should have a couple in your car, um, at home, like you always have them on you because you never know when you're gonna meet somebody and you can say, well, here's at least this, you can kind of look over it and then, um, We'll sit down and go over it in more detail when we meet and, you know, start the process, right? Because they have to have a contract to start reviewing. 
So the reason I want to go over this with you is because when it comes time to make an offer, it's going to go really quickly. I'm going to be sending you DocuSign, and it's going to be click, click, click. And so you don't have a chance to really read over the contract. So that's why I want to go over this right now, OK? And again, this is a lot of information. And I'm going to go over each step of it as we get to it in the home buying process. So here we go. This is where your name goes and the seller's name goes. This is the price we're going to be offering on the home. I just want to give you a reference point. Most homes go for 97% of asking price. That's an important number, y'all. 97%. So when they want a low ball, you can say, well, I, you know, I want to offer whatever. That's fine. If you're willing to lose out on this home, I understand. I ran the comps. You know, I will always run the comps from you and make sure you are never overpaying for a home. Okay, but when homes are going for 97% of, of list price, then we know we probably need to be close to that range. The next line is earnest money. Earnest money is only 1% of the purchase price. So if we're looking at, so whatever they're qualified for, you're looking at a $300,000 home, that's $3,000. Do you have that money readily available? Because that'll have to go to title company within 48 hours. Okay. If they say no, then you can say, okay, well, I need you to make sure that it is available, if it's in a savings account or, or whatever. That's something that you will need to have that we can write a check to the title company when we get an offer accepted. So that way you know right away if they have money or not. Okay? That's why I get that earnest money. It's always 1% of the sales price. Down payment. So your down payment. What does your down payment look like? It's 3%. Okay, great. So that earnest money goes towards your down payment. So you'll have to bring in 2 more percent of the sales price. And then that's what we'll, we would be offering for the price of the home. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So then um, close of escrow is typically 30 days, 30 to 45 days. Does that work for you? No, it doesn't because you have a four-month lease. Or no, now we're at 60 days. So you'll say, I have 60 days. So I'll say, you know what? That makes total sense. But... Normally, if we do any more than 30 days, it's not a VA loan. Sometimes they won't accept our offer. So we want to make it as attractive as possible with our offer because it's a seller's market. So even if we do a 40-day, that'll give you 10 days to move out. And then you don't have a mortgage payment for another month. You skip your first mortgage payment. So you won't actually be paying your mortgage until November 1st. Okay? Okay, so 30 days. 30 days is typical close of escrow. Okay? Except for VA, VA is 45. Those are important days. What if the lender says they can do 30 in a VA? Still do 45? Still do 45. You'll bump, and you'll bump it up. Mm -hmm. If they have all of the information, so that's why it's important that we work with our lenders to yeah. know is he fully qualified and approved? Or is he just a pre approval? Or is he like, He's already pr provided all the information and and he's already started the underwriting process yeah i always maybe 40 days if he's like i'm good i would give 40 days you just and you can talk to the lender ultimately it's up to, i mean he would be the one that would he's the one that determines it yeah but if you don't hit close of escrow you've got some really grouchy people yeah mm -hmm. you've got a grouchy seller and a grouchy buyer so, um, yeah. especially if the home's vacant. So if the homes are vacant, you always want to shoot for an earlier close of escrow. They don't want to have to pay another mortgage payment. Okay, so here it talks about, um, so this is important. These are the items, I want you to review this on your own. These are the items that are included. So on page two of the purchase contract, these are the items that are included with the home and the, these are the items that are optional. Refrigerator, washer, and dryer are always optional. Is that something that you need? Yes, because you're a first time home buyer, they always need appliances. Okay, when we're looking at homes, I'll show you a section where you can see if that's included or not. If not, then we'll have to add that to uh, our purchase contract, okay? Financing, you've already spoken to the lender, you've already got your pre-approval, 
people will not accept an offer, sellers will not accept an offer unless they have that pre-approval letter. So I really appreciate you doing the homework and getting that squared away. So we're going to be doing an FHA loan. And so I know that you said you have about $5,000. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask for seller concessions. We're going to see if maybe they will um, provide some seller concessions. If it's a really hot property, which is the market we're in right now, we might not be able to get seller concessions for closing costs. So I would talk to the lender and see if there's some way that we can work it. Um, if you cannot get closing costs, then we'll have to come up with a creative way to make this offer attractive to the seller, okay? Maybe we offer a little bit more and then we ask for closing costs, right? We offer, we offer, you know, 305 and then they cover the, you know, 5,000 in closing costs, okay? And this is, guys, this offer process is critical, so you really need to rely on the folks here in the office to help you with writing your offers, okay? Are you doing that? I had someone help me out. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Do, yes. you ever, do you have a problem with you, you um, go over and then it doesn't come in at appraisal? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, again, you're going to run the comps. You're going to run the comps. And that's what we talked about for pricing at the very beginning. I'm always going to run the comps on the home that you're buying to see how it's priced because it has to meet appraisal as well. And we'll get into that in this a later part of the contract, okay? So um, the title and escrow company, this is the title uh, company that I use. They're fantastic and I know they're gonna get the job done. They're gonna say, oh, okay, great. Yes. So how, how long did it take you before you were comfortable enough to write your own offer? Just that Um, I, because I was a transaction coordinator, I did about 70 contracts before, so I knew what to look for. But I did seven or eight on my very first contract. So I got really good at writing them. And I did I did practice contracts a lot. I did a lot of, I would see a house and I would be like, okay, Mr. Mr. Smith, this is, um, he's gonna make an offer on this house and I would go through it and then I would hand it off to Shivani and I would say, what do you think? How does it look? You need to practice writing them. And so, so we can practice writing them and just bring them in and ask somebody to review them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you can say, what do you think of this? And you could maybe even ask if you can see a few examples, mm -hmm. you know, and that, or you just have them critique the offer that you made and then you write your next offer. And you guys need to do a zip forms class. If you have not signed up for a zip forms class, um, Jeff, what's his name? Jeff, he's this interesting fella, but it is the best class. on zip forms it's gonna make and he talks super fast um, it feels like you're drinking from a fire hose but it's gonna make your contract writing he offers them every week get in one there so do you, and there are CE class too I'm sorry yeah I need to keep interrupting but um, so do you typically keep like contracts with you when you go to like um, I mean have you ever had somebody be like, okay, so I'm ready to like sign out or, you know, make up a, an offer mm -hmm. or whatever? Yeah. Do you typically keep contracts with you when you go? So all of them are online. They're all on um, Zipforms Plus, the contracts. So when I go into Zipforms, 
So if I have my computer with me, I will never do it right there in front of the client. I'll say, we can go back to my office and I'll write it up. But one thing that I've done that was a big fat mistake is do it in front of your client. Okay? You need to say, give me 30 minutes. If you guys want to go grab a coffee, um, come back and I'll have the offer prepared for you. Okay? I don't do well under pressure. Is somebody watching me? Um, prepare the offer. Okay? So, but you just go into zip forms, you create templates. You're going to create templates with Jeff. Jeff is going to teach you how to create zip form templates, and that's going to make your life so much easier. Do you have templates? No, I was doing a lot of copy and pasting. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of tricks and tips that he teaches you that are invaluable. I mean, hours time saving, invaluable. So, okay. Title and escrow. So if you have, so this is where you're going to be taking that earnest money. Once we get an accepted offer, this is where you're going to be taking the earnest money to deposit. We have to deposit that within 48 hours after contract acceptance, okay? Okay, great. So, and that can just be a personal check or we can do a wire, whatever's most convenient for you. Here we have um, the disclosures. So every seller has to fill out what's called a seller's property disclosure. We nickname it the SPUDS, but it's in, it's all the information that they know about the property, how long they live there, if they've done any updates, um, if they've had any pest issues, or you know um, anything that they that they know about the property, they put that in there. Then they're also going to provide us a claims history report. It goes back five years. And that is provided from their insurance company to see if they've had any claims on them. Okay? So those are the two items that are disclosed. If they're foreign sellers, maybe they're Canadian. We have a lot of Canadian um, buyers and sellers here. Then they would have to disclose that as well. And if the home was built before 1978, then they'll have to provide a lead-based uh, lead paint disclosure. We're not looking in homes that, that are, so that doesn't really concern us. Um, warranties. Basically, this kind of talks about that there really are no verbal warranties. You can review this. If you have any questions, please let me know. But the due diligence period. So this is, this is where we really um, have to do our homework. After we accept a contract and our offer is accepted, the next day is day one. We have 10 days to do our due diligence. So they have to provide us that seller's property disclosure that we talked about. I go ahead and set up a home inspector. I get our home inspector, our home inspector and a termite inspector set up right away. I'll take care of that for you. That costs normally run about four to five hundred dollars for the home inspection, and then about seventy-five dollars for the termite inspection. And that is another cost that you'll incur when we go into purchasing a home. Is that okay with you? Okay, great. So. Just be prepared. You can normally um, write a check or do a credit card payment for that, okay? So he's going to go in, spend a couple of hours, three to four hours, inspecting the property. He inspects everything. And then we go in the last 30 minutes together, and he does a highlight overview of what is involved with that home inspection. And so you and I then will talk about all the items that he talked about, and we can negotiate. So there's three options that we can do. We can make our list, but what I always recommend is I always recommend getting the big items taken care of. HVAC, roof, those kind of things. Or if there's anything else that's big, you know, if it's a light fixture or an outlet or something, I don't normally go after those because they might say, okay, well, we'll fix the outlet, but we won't fix the roof. So, um, so I just kind of want to prepare you that it is a lived-in home, and they are going to find things. That's his job. But we will work together, and I will, you know, advise you on kind of the items that we should ask for repairs or not. Do you have any questions about that? Okay. So if schools are important to you, then, you know, I do want you to verify that it's, you know, that you are in the proper school district, okay? Um, then we go into um, 
the buyer's disapproval, this inspection period. So we have up to 10 days to do the inspection period. It normally doesn't take that long, but sometimes it does. And so what we do is we have the option now to go to the seller and say, it's called a buyer's inspection notice seller's response. We name it the Binzer. This is our opportunity to say we want items A, B, and C fixed. We sign off on it and we send them the inspection report. They receive it and they have a couple of options that they can do on this report. They can then say, we will fix all the items. We will fix some of the items. We will give money towards the closing cost or we will do nothing. At that point, you can say, I accept or I decline, okay? That's the area that we can, we go into negotiations again. Okay, so once we get through that, once we come to an acceptable agreement, then it goes into appraisal. So the appraisal is done by the lender, and that's about a four or $500 fee that sometimes your lender will put in your closing cost, or you'll go ahead and have to pay for as well, okay? So that's another expense that you will be incurring for this home purchase process. So, here we move into um, uh, the home warranty. The home warranty is normally between five and seven hundred dollars, and um, so it can be a little bit pricey. I always recommend getting a home warranty. If the home has been on the market for a little while, I'll ask the seller to pay for it. If it's only been on the market for a day or two, I might say we split it 50-50, or maybe you incur it as a closing cost. But I always highly recommend a home warranty, okay? This is remedies. This is in case there's any issues or disputes with the home. We would go into arbitration or mediation. This is a place to add any other terms and conditions that we might find, which I normally don't. Um, but if there's something about the property that I feel like we need to add to this contract, that's where I would add it. Here it talks about the fact that the compensation, it's a totally free service to you to use my services. The seller covers my compensation. Okay, and then one other thing is time is of the essence. So it's really important when I send you an email or I give you a call that you, you take care of that signature or whatever because we have timelines that are written in this contract like I told you about the 10 days. and So we have timelines that we have to meet. So it's really important that time is of the essence to you as well. Is that fair? Okay. So. Then at the end here, we have terms of acceptance. Normally, we ask for 24 hours um, for them to respond by, but if the house is a really hot property and you have to find a home today, then I would do a shorter time frame. But I try to be respectful of the seller and give them 24 hours for this. So here is where you would, you would put your information and then they would agree or counter at that point on this, on this purchase contract. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information. Do you have any questions? Okay. Does anybody have any questions as a buyer? Some of the properties that we view that we viewed, they've um, no clue report, no spuds. It was never lived in mm -hmm. by the sellers. Mm -hmm. um, what do you say to your buyer about about that? About not getting about not getting a disclosure or. A, um, so there's something called LexisNexis that you can do to at least pull the claims history. So Clue is an insurance claims history report and it's like $40 okay. and um, that you can get it through LexisNexis. So if they won't provide it then they can do it okay. that way. And then um, your home inspector, you guys, if you need good home inspectors, I've got them. I've got great home inspectors. That is going to make or break you. Okay. Do they get in on the armless key, um, key box? Yes. Thing? Okay. So you don't yes. have to be there. You don't have to be there for the full time they're there. You do not. You need them clients and no. So, um, oh, there's so much information I want to share with y'all. And I just feel like I'm running out of time. Okay. So. What I say, what I say after we go through the purchase contract, I say so. After after we go through appraisal, the home, 
the home should appraise based on the comps that I ran for you. It looks like it's within the comparable price range. So at that point, we kind of go into a quiet period. And that quiet period, you're not, we're not going to really, you know, have to be talking so much to me as you will your lender. Your lender is going to be asking for more documentation, a firstborn's blood, um, whatever is necessary. But you just need to be prompt and get them all the documentation they need to get you to close a best row. So your next step, once we get an accepted offer, I'm going to email you the contract. And then I'm going to text you the title officer's information so we can get that check or wire sent over within that 48 hour time period. I'm going to go ahead and set up your home inspection and your termite inspection. So is midday better for you or evening? So it'd be, we'd meet between 11, 30, and 12, or we'd meet between four and five. What works better for you? Okay, so I'll make sure when I schedule that that it's in the evening, so that works best for you, okay? And so we'll, again, go through that inspection period. We'll, we'll work together to pick out what's most important to you and what I feel like can be the most expensive repairs. And then I'll prepare that Vinzer report. We'll send it over to the seller. We'll see what they agree to. And then after they agree to maybe fix a few things or maybe we can get some more money towards closing costs for you, you'll have to do the repairs on your own later, right? Um, then it'll go kind of quiet. You won't really hear from me a whole lot. And then about a week before close of escrow, we'll be talking about scheduling a final walkthrough. So you and I will go back to the property before you go to sign for the, um, for the home and we'll make sure everything has been repaired or is in the same way it was before the last time we were in the property. And then um, we'll go to closing. I'll be at closing with you. Did you hear that? I'll be at closing with you because you're their agent. You should always be at closing with them. The title officer will send me an estimated settlement statement. And basically what that is, is that just makes sure that the escrow officer got everything in the um, settlement statement that was accurate to the contract. So for you guys, it's going to look like Greek, that estimated settlement statement. The things that are important for you to check are what we've negotiated, the purchase price, if there's any seller concessions, um, the HOA fees. So I'll tell you guys, on HOA addendums, I always split them 50-50. And what I always say is I want to create a win-win. So I feel like 50-50 is a win-win because the buyer's paying a little bit, the seller's paying a little bit. Sometimes even with home warranty. For transfer fees, you mean, for HOA? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And if there's any um, uh, capital improvement fees or anything like that, or master association fees, so like um, some lakes, some 55 and up communities, they have capital improvement fees. Trilogy and Gilbert, they're 2,000, okay? So it just kind of depends, okay? So, yeah. Um, I have a question, because I actually had an agent, um, I have a listing in Biltmore and they have a land lease over there. Oh. And yeah, it's under contract for the second time, so hopefully it doesn't fall off. But I had another agent call me because at close of escrow, my seller has to pay like a $6,500 uh, special assessment. Mm -hmm. And so the HOA told me that that's non-transferable, so he's paying it. But I had another agent call me that just got a listing in there and she wants to know, she asked me if she could put it in the purchase contract, just like negotiate it for the buyer to assume it. Mm -hmm. you, have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't, I'm sorry. Okay. I, that's a great gym, gym question. Mm -hmm. Ashton okay. Calendar. He will tell you. Okay. Guys, any questions is never a dumb question. Ask the broker, that's what they're here for, okay? I was nervous to ask questions at first, but this is legal and um, you don't wanna take a chance. Don't take a risk, don't take a chance. Um, I definitely advise working alongside a seasoned agent for your first couple of transactions. Um, don't do it on your own. Um, you really want somebody's expertise to kind of help you um, get through your first couple transactions. Okay. So, um, come on, search engine.
Let me go back to the PowerPoint. Let's see if there's anything else. Okay, scripts. Okay. We just did the buyer consultation. Okay, so action plan. Do you guys feel more comfortable now? How to talk to a buyer, how to find a buyer, how to look for homes for a buyer, how to farm your neighborhood and know the area that you're doing an open house in, right? Um, how to prepare for that open house, um, how to go through this guide, this, this purchase contract. Again, guys, practice, practice on yourself, your family, whoever will listen to you. And if they won't listen to you, then just do it yourself. Practice with Susie, practice with Amanda, you know. So they just say they don't have those, right? They're now. out, they're, they're out. out. But you guys wanna just kind of flip through it, you can get an idea. Get familiar, but that was one of the things that Shivani told me. That one's really great because it kind of does the highlights for you. I pick out the most important pieces of the contract. You saw I didn't read the whole contract to them. They don't want to know what it says. I picked out the important pieces, right? I picked. I talked about price. I talked about earnest money because they need that. I talked about close of escrow. They need to know. So I forgot the one last piece, y'all. As soon as we're done with the final walk, then we will do the signing. So what has to happen is your loan has to fund with the lender, then the lender will notify the escrow officer and they say, now you can record. Even though we've signed on the house, that doesn't mean you get the keys right mm -hmm. when you sign. It then has to record with the county and then I'll get an email or a phone call saying, it's recorded with the county and now I can bring you the keys. So that's when I get to bring you your set of keys. So I want you to know that even though you signed for the home, you don't get the keys right when we sign. It's on that close of escrow and it's normally in the afternoon, okay? So I don't want you to prepare for when to come the day of close of escrow. You need to prepare for the following day, okay? That's important. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, any ahas from today? You weren't explained everything? Yeah. 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 Again, my what I always what I always say to my buyers and anybody that I'm talking to, my dental hygienist, I sold her house, you know, is it's your largest investment. You know, working with a realtor costs you nothing to purchase a home, but you definitely want somebody that's in your corner that will guide you and make sure your best interest is at heart through the entire transaction. And, okay, so this is another great line, is <clears throat> you find out somebody's moving. You know what, I would love an interview. Would you mind if I could have an interview for the, you know, to be a possible buyer's agent? Don't ever ask for the, bit. well, this is against Keller Williams, but this is my way of asking for the business, is I would love an opportunity to interview for a, to, to be a, your real estate agent. Then they then they feel like they're in control, right? Then you bring the value and you can just say, you know, I know this area, I've lived in Arizona my whole life and uh, I know this area very well. Um, you know, it's, it's really important that, you know, during the inspection process, I've got one of the best home inspectors. You know, it's, it's so fun to be able to just go out and look at homes. That's only one piece of buying a home. I'll make sure to connect you with the right lenders. I'll make sure to connect you with the right home inspector and fight for every penny we can get for you. Okay? So, all right. Any other things that um, you guys found helpful or have questions about that I can maybe clarify for you?
years ago. Um, the integration with the dot loop wasn't uh, what we needed it to be. So that's why we went with zip forms. And zip forms um, connects right to um, zip forms connects to I'm going to show you guys really cool. No, I don't want to close that. So I'll show you something. We're in RPR, right? This is a great way that you can look up comps for the home. If you click view details, so if you click right here, let's say you're wanting to make an offer on this house, okay? You click view details. This is a super easy, fast way for you to um, see why RPR is giving it a value of 327, but the listing agent has it listed for 335. Okay, you can go here and see some of the other homes. Okay, so this one here, so this one sold back in March for 325, same square footage. I wonder if it had a pool. This listing has a pool. Let's see. How can I get into it? it's not coming up for me to be able to look at the listings. I need to scroll somewhere. But then down here, there's another one that sold for 370. Then there's another one, again, all the same square footage that sold for 315. So that's where you need to do a little bit more work. I don't know why. If you go into comp analysis. Confirm facts. Yeah. Do you guys know how to run comps in MLS? Yeah, okay. So just do it that way. Have but you ever done it on Monsoon? That way it shows properties that were sold off market? No. You don't? Mm -mm. No. But this does show you. That's why I like this. Um, so you can confirm the facts. Everything is correct. Does it show that it has a pool? Garages. Yeah. Okay. Fine comps. So here you can refine the search a little bit, your comp search. So for me, I only want homes that are at least three bedrooms and two baths. And I want the living space to be 1,800. So again, it's 500 up and 500 down. So if it's 2,100 square feet, that's, that's how your appraiser is gonna get their values, right? So it's 2,108 square feet, so 2,600 square feet. <coughs> And we're going back to the last six months. Okay, so here I can click on it and see the actual property. So this one sold back in March for 325. Did it have a pool? It did have a pool. So then I'll kind of scroll through. So it looks very similar to my client's house, but this was back in March. So, okay, decent comp. Let's go to the next one. So this one sold for 370, same square footage, right? So I always look at the map too. Okay, so it's a corner lot. It's an oversized lot. It looks like it backs up to a golf course. So that makes sense why it sold for 370. Okay, 
So I'm still feeling pretty good about the fact that, you know, at 335, I still feel like it's pretty good comp. You know, we've got some good comps here. This one, um, 315. So this one, does it have a pool? No, it doesn't look like it has a pool. So let me go into my maps. Because really, a pool does make a difference. No pool. So if I don't want to go through the description and look through every picture and all that, and I can see, is it a little dated? Is it updated? But a pool does make a difference. And it sold back in um, April. So I'm feeling like 335 is a pretty good price for my for my listing that has a pool. Lot size is about the same as this. It's been updated, similar to this. I feel like we can feel pretty confident with that 335 price. We go in at that price, I feel like it's a good it's a good fair offer. Is that okay with you? But anyways, so here it shows all the comps you don't when you're running the comps you don't want to look at a single story and a two story they're not the same they're not the same comp you don't want to look at homes with pools and homes without pools you want to make sure it's as similar to that home as possible okay because price per square foot on single stories is higher than two stories always remember that homes over 3,000 square feet are lower price per square foot than homes that are less than 3,000 square feet okay so know your area, start concentrating on where you live first. So then when you're at the grocery store or whatever, and you might start up a conversation or they you know, have a kid that has a sh elementary school shirt on that your kid goes to or whatever, you know, you can be like, oh, do you like that school? Are you guys happy at that school? Oh, what neighborhood do you guys live in? What do you love about your neighborhood? Okay, so if you guys want the names of the lenders that I have, um, or the title company, I'm happy to give those to you after class, okay? Does anybody want one of my cards? You're welcome to call me or whatever, anytime. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you guys have been awesome. I'm really excited you're in real estate and I was with another brokerage um, before we moved here, and it's night and day difference um, working with Keller Williams because everybody is so willing to help. This business is very cutthroat. So um, you guys stand out because you are being taught and, um, you know, shine. That's all I can say. So, but yeah, feel free to text or call with any questions or, you know, you're welcome. You bet. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I wish you guys the very best. <laughs>
again. Yeah. And uh, but I, I want to see you know other other agents. Other people. Yeah, yeah. So if you ever have a, an open house or whatever, yeah, I yeah. I will, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not busy. <laughs> you're not busy? <laughs> I'm not busy right yeah. Um, well, so this is this is my thing. Because I have four yeah. kiddos, yeah. Um, I try to do my open houses yeah. um, during the week. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because, and I do that intentionally, but yeah. I, so I don't really do open houses in the summer yeah. because oh, yeah. not many people are out. Uh -huh. I do them in the 55 and up communities okay. because every day is a Saturday. That's nice. Yeah, so I will probably start that um, in October, November, and I'll be happy to have you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm interested in that, too. Okay. <laughs> My brother was looking in a 55 and older community okay. up in um, Peoria. Where? Peoria? He was in Peoria, and okay. now he was just telling me that maybe he would be interested in coming closer to where I live, in Gilbert. So I know there's only one here. Right. Oh no, there's Gilbert. tons. So let me ask you, what is he looking for? Does he want new or does he, and how old so is he? He's 50, I don't know, 55, 56. Awesome. I okay. So, big family. Yes. <laughs> so that's wonderful. So there's a, there's a neighborhood in East Mark. It's 55 and up for 55s. And it's an AV home. And HOA is very reasonable. Um, Frank Smith is the sales agent there. That's fantastic. They are beautiful homes, they have some specs. And um, write that down real quick it's called Encore Eastmark. Yes, yes, beautiful community. Yeah. And, and they rent. Uh, do they rent? No. Or just buy. No, areas? just buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can also it's send it to off or whatever. I just wanted to get you were saying. Your, oh yeah. Your like lenders. Yes, 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 this. yes. Let me um, mm -hmm. let me let me make sure it is. How can I tell if it is? Is it on? Looks like it's still 